Welcome to the OSRS podcast, where we talk to RuneScape content creators about RuneScape content. I'm Emma Cat, one of your hosts, followed by. What's going on, boys? Rex, as always. Oh, oh my god, he's, for, he's forgot already. I think, yeah, no, how am I not getting announced? Like, where is we the spoke about, about this? <laughs> you oh must I'm, a, I'm a guest over here. You I know two, I've been on the club a few you've times. You've been but... on here like seven <laughs> times. You're basically like a fucking founder at this point. Come on, bro. <laughs> okay, well, it's me, Solo Mission. Well, it's your boy, Manked. <laughs> there we go. Was that that was that, that hard? Now, Rice Tub is difficult. out here. Out traveling in Amsterdam, so we're sadly at the, had to replace him with the neck reel and the worldwide dead man mode champion to talk about the new dead man mode released during the summit announcement, which is going to be huge. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, but but first, we got to do a little bit of sellout. If we somehow hit a thousand likes again, we've hit it the last couple podcasts, and we have been blowing up. Thank you so much. If we hit it again, me and Rakesy are going to be playing dead man mode, and we will death match. And record it and probably upload it on some channel, probably this one. So we will deathmatch when Dead Man Mode does start for a thousand likes. And Rakes, do you want to talk about the sub goal? Yeah, so we we don't know exactly what sub goal we want to hit for, but I'm assuming we got a lot of people watching the podcast. You guys aren't subscribed. We can see this. It's something like I think 10% of our audience is subscribed. Oh 90% God. of you. It's free. You just you click a button. It's it's that simple, and you'll never miss a podcast. But in all seriousness, we are very very close to 10k subs. Hey, look at that balloon. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're about 3k subs, I think, away from 10k, which would be absolutely insane. So if you guys could help us out, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so because it it goes a hell of a long way. And you know, it's like 10k subs. Like, that's sick, right? Like, that's just, that's the ultimate number until 100k. So, please subscribe. And, they, and the people down below will also deathmatch if we hit 10k subs. So there's two deathmatches on the line for Dead Man. Well, we're... <laughs> they yeah, we agreed. Are. They agreed, 100%. Are they actually, in all, are they actually gonna, are they gonna do that? Are they gonna DM? Of course. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I think you owe our audience um, just a little preview of what's to come. We're going to save oh, the rest man. when Rice comes, but we thought because we don't want to farm dislikes that we should give you a little preview for hitting yeah. 1K likes in the last podcast. I'm just really hoping that everybody forgets about the whole fucking cutting of hair for a thousand likes because my missus isn't too happy. She's uh, She's very upset about this whole thing, so... Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this as well. I didn't think we were going to hit 1k. We hit like 700 likes in like four hours. And I was just like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even, <laughs> so I didn't even like tell my missus. I was just like, there's no way it's going to happen. And then four hours later, I'm like, oh my God, it's happening. It's going to happen. There's, sorry, buddy. There's no going back, man. You've made the OSRS commitment. <laughs> Oh yeah! How long this hair is right now, man? <laughs> I think and everybody always says I bit. have a mullet, but I really don't. It's just it's oh long God. all the way around. This is this right here is a man who is committed to sticking to the lockdown, boys. I don't break that shit, okay? I don't go outside for nothing, and this is gonna be what is that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, there it is, boys. Um, Thank you for the thousand likes. Your worthy haircut. If one of you guys leave a comment on this video, I will happily mail this out to you, but you're going to have to pay for postage. Okay. Beautiful. Bro, I feel scammed. I actually feel scammed. I didn't even like the video. Um, Actually, I did. I did. Okay. We're maybe, save maybe the show it's... for when Rice. I, listen, I don't even care. Like, I will happily cut it off. I just don't want to upset my missus, man, because she's like, she's like really upset about me cutting my hair off. So, but like, I barely, I barely wear it like this. It's very rare for me to wear it like this. I'm not used to having long hair. So, yeah, it is what it is. So, yeah. Either way, let's jump into dead man mode and hopefully forget that whole scenario there. Um, so we have the dead man mode blog up. There were more than one change. All right, and there's just way too much to cover. Uh, should we just read and then talk about it as we go down the whole blog? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Okay. So I think it'd be worth saying as well. So 
we we haven't heard anything in terms of like exciting updates for for RuneScape. It's we've been in the dark now for a good couple months. And uh, I think it's fair to say things haven't been going too well, right? It's like the economy's been crashing. There's been, like, no sign of updates. Promised updates just aren't coming into the game. And I feel like we were kind of in a bit of a a bit of a rut for a couple months. And I think that's, like, the majority of the old school RuneScape community. And then they just and just streamed the Summer Summit, where they announced everything that people want. Like, we literally have Dead Mood coming back which we've not had now for probably a year, I'm guessing. Is it about a year, Manx? Yeah, year and two months, I think. Year and this two man months. This knows the months. <laughs> <laughs> They've just announced the new Twisted Leaks. Uh, they're also releasing Group Iron Man with a date, which is possibly subject to change. And they even teased us with Raids Free. Like, this podcast, that summit, that summer summit podcast they did... It was phenomenal. Like, I was so fucking giddy afterwards. Mm-hmm. I, I can't even tell you, man. Because it's just like, we needed to hear this. But um, probably the most exciting thing that was uh, announced was the Dead Man Reborn, which is actually going to be coming into game, I believe, the 25th of August. So this month, there is going to be a brand new Dead Man mode. And um, it's nice because it seems like they've changed a hell of a lot. And uh, I think I can speak for all of us and say that's definitely a good thing, considering. Um, so I'll skip over Dead Man. What is Dead Man? Because obviously, we know what Dead Man mode is, and we'll what just if get straight new, down. What they're new, Racy? You want to new okay, people? All right, well, I'll let you. I'll let you cover what Dead Man is. Mate. Oh no, I didn't. Mid, sound, okay. Mid. Well, you let's just it. talk about the most noticeable changes. So obviously, Dead okay. Man is a non-permanent game mode very risky you die you lose experience you use your uh your top 10 bank items but now we're gonna have a three life system right you lose three lives you get completely wiped you keep most of your non-combat stats but everything gets wiped and the person who kills you gets a 28 just a large original demo mode bank key they're going to be splitting up the worlds into combat brackets. There's going to be different safe zones. Single plus is going to be added, and the 1v1 at the end of the game is completely different. I don't think there's a multi-zone. Am I missing anything? There's just so much that is new. Uh, that sounds like most of it. Oh, sigils mm-hmm. as well, like relics sigils. from yeah. the leagues that have been by. Yeah, yeah, and apparently you can get sigils from monsters. So it's like if you farm monsters, you can get one and trade them. Uh, but I believe you can only sell them in the Grand Exchange. So Clan Man mode doesn't exist with sigils, or I'm sure it will. But yeah. there's yeah. just so much. There's just so really, much to go over. I really do like that. As soon as they said that, that the sigils can only be traded on the Grand Exchange, I was like, damn. Like, this sounds... Dude, I like, here's a question for you, Manx, and Solo, because I know you both uh, joined clans for this. Do you think it's even going to be that necessary to join a clan this time around? Um, I think for max max gear, yes. But otherwise, for the majority of people, if you if you're not playing to win, you're just playing for fun. No, you don't need to be in a clan. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah, I I think so as well. Because something else that they've added is single plus, which uh, for those of you guys that don't know, it basically means when there's a PvP interaction, two players are attacking each other, no one else can interfere. Which, to be honest with you, I kind of already thought that was in Dead Man modes. Um, but I know for a fact the thing that wasn't is that if somebody's now attacking or being attacked by an NPC, that player versus player combat will always prioritize over that. Oh yeah, I feel yeah. that's gonna be oh, that's gonna be crazy. Crazy. Really so that mechanic. Yes. Oh my god! Like I mean, oh, think no about boxing. the people. Like there are there have been in the past. Um, somebody that comes to minds. Uh, God, I can't think what his bloody name is right now. He's probably streaming Beer- Beardy something. It's not Ginger Beardy, it's Bearded Beard something. What? What's that, sorry? Beard Squad? Beard Squad, that's the guy. So that man would religiously like just not log out from the start of Dead Man Mode and get himself to Abyssal Demons in one sitting, and it took him like 30 plus hours, which is just disgusting. So it's not going to be that easy this time around. Because like, if you're attacking, if you're just doing Slayer and that's like your thing... It doesn't matter, like, you're gonna be able to get PJ'd, people are gonna be able to attack you, kill you, and uh, on top of that, they've even made it so if you die three times, 
it's not just a case of you lose XP, you lose all of your combat XP. You go back to level three in Lumbridge. You gotta be safe. You gotta be, <laughs> this is strategic. Those streaming, like me, and I believe Manked will be streaming, we are gonna be having a hell of a time. I, I'm constantly gonna get reset. I already know that. I'll be, I'll be living in that first tier world forever. Uh, I, before we get into the Dem Hemo blog, though, let's ask our guests, start with Solo. Uh, what is your favorite change this dead man mode season uh my favorite change is the sigils i think they worked really well with leagues because it just changes up the meta so much and nobody knows what like the best combination of three of them is going to be like we could have some like completely new builds in like the final hour so that's going to be really interesting that's by far my favorite bot yeah that's that's a solid one to go for i think if it wasn't sigils i'd probably go for the final being changed a lot because it caters so much more to just 1v1ers. You know, it's not really clamor mode anymore. It does kind of suck for the clans, but for me personally, I much prefer going into the finals, knowing I don't have to fight any multi-teams. It's just straight up 1v1s. So that's my favorite Dude, part. I, I don't know why they didn't do that change sooner, to be completely honest with you. They like, enjoyed like, the ruckus. But you know? here's, mm. here's the thing. What's enjoyable about it? Like even the Watch. commentators, I, I can't. Like, I can't lie. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy participating in the dude, multi stage. To be okay, <laughs> it might it might be fun sort of participating. I obviously have my own opinion on this. I'll be honest with you. I've never made it to the finals in Dead Man Mode. Okay, <laughs> the the last Dead Man Mode that we did, I was fortunate enough to. Uh, I think it was Blazers that I joined up with the night before. Uh, Wiggled was like, "Hey, can you guys make sure you DM me your name so I can get you in the clan chat." Wake up the next day, and uh, lo and behold, I'm not added to the clan chat. So I'm just roaming around Falador, clanless, fucking, like, spam DMing him, like, bro, can you add me to the CC? Like, where are we? No reply. And uh, luckily, I grouped up with another another small Morty team that just kind of adopted me, and we got one shot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that was um, um, basically every time. Do you think that was on purpose? Do you think he's just like, no, yeah, no, 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 not at all. I, I messaged so. him after. I was just, I messaged him after. I was like, I was really annoyed. And I messaged him. I just like, look, man. I was like, I'm really annoyed about this whole thing. And I was like, what happened here? We just, we just talked it out. And we got to the bottom of it. And I was like, you know, it is done now. It's fine. It is what it is. But this is really good because it doesn't feel like you have to be in a clan now to stand a chance of winning this tournament. And I fucking love that, dude. Like, I'm not even kidding. This gets me so excited to the point where I actually will properly go hard at this dead man mode. I don't feel Ooh. like I've even tried in the past ones. I've grinded hours. But in terms of having, like, a winning mentality, it's never been there. Because I'm just like, yeah, I'm not even going to get past Morty phase. Like, what's even the point in me trying to get best gear and trading and swapping GP and stuff like that? But now, I think that any solo PK are stands a chance as long as they're they're half decent a hybrid in like you've probably got a decent chance of this yeah it's gonna be crazy i just i'm still thinking about that single plus where you can just pj people off monsters <laughs> oh my god i mean I just imagine I yeah i just yeah, it's, gonna be, so, it's gonna be such a different it's gonna be such a different game this time around and if anything this is probably the most brutal version of deadmon so far because it's just going to be really difficult to escape and when you do die it's incredibly punishing <laughs> Right. Our, our Vesta it depends what, what be? Yeah, it's going to be VLSs and everything. Can you imagine just doing like a it's blood gonna be, bill? It's going to be a blood It's going to be a blood bill, to be honest. Imagine, and I know this is kind of too close to home for Solo, but imagine doing Cerberus and they just come in and barrage you. You can't tell <laughs> oh, You're literally rat, stuck. Bro. Like, Cer <laughs> dude, Cerb's going to be so difficult now. Oh, even man. stuff like this, even stuff like the Slayer Tower. Like, if you're a PK, why wouldn't you just hop round at the gargoyles all day long? Because you can attack yeah. anyone now. Yeah. So it's going to be oh, really yeah. hard for the whips to come into the game and all that sort of stuff. Dude, clans are going to yeah. just take over certain spots, and you're not going to be able to touch those areas, man. Actually, that's a little terrifying. Oh my god. But you I'm, do have singles I'm... plus though. So, like, if you can fi if you can fight, then you can go and take a clan person down. You, well, yeah, you fight this guy who's been awake for 50 hours peeing in buckets. You know, <laughs> what, what are you going to do to that, man? <laughs> yeah. Well, they have the um, they have the combat bracket worlds as well. Should we just go through the changes, like, one by yes. one? Because there's just yeah, so much, like, at once. Dude, I love that I love that Solo's, like, taken on the role of Rice Cup in <laughs> such a spiritual way. If Rice the Cup is here, 
<laughs> Man, if Rice Cup was here, he would be literally fuming that the mint was just like, ah, eh, skip it all. Let's just get into it. I know it. <laughs> what, right. what do you mean, bro? Oh my god. Okay. Where should we start? We're, we're start we'll start here with um. I, I'll read. Uh, I'll read this first part. So the safe zones. Um, it's basically just describing the safe zones. So it seems like it's mostly the safe zones we've had in the past. Uh, Barbarian assault inside the mini game. I didn't know that was safe underneath i had no idea about that and i died at that bank which is kind of annoying uh but I d- is that a new change manked because i know you probably no. know that's, that's always so been like basically that. no downstairs is still dangerous but you have to run all the way to wave one so some people get to wave 10 and then stop so you can just oh, go wow. down and go into wave 10 and then you're safe oh damn okay well that's good to know uh yeah it so there's just weird. a list here basically the normal ones uh i don't think mm-hmm. there's anything new on here it looks about the same um it's basically saying, now that we know what you're thinking, a Skull player could jump into one of these safe zones and try to lose their Skull timer. In fact, if you're Skulled upon entering a safe zone, a demo guard will appear and attack with range every game cycle. Dude, yeah, that's the same. do you know something mm-hmm. about this which made me... Like, it was saying they're changing how you get Spirit into Multi, I believe. And the first thing that came to my mind was, I believe it was like the last end my mode or maybe the one before that. I was in max. I was PKing up at uh, the Fremenic area, checking like the Slayer Cave and stuff like that. And I got baited so hard. Oh my God. So there's a guy stood in full rune just outside of the Fremenic like gates where you can actually attack people. And I kill this guy and I run over to loot his stuff. And some guy in maxed comes out of the portal freezes me on that line and then he just runs over of his spear and he's just typing in chat low 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 and he just spears <laughs> me into the guards <laughs> and i oh, think um, i think that was the last demo mode video i made i don't even know if i put that clip in to be honest i was so annoyed <laughs> that's one way to go down man i remember c engineer yeah. made a whole video of that i yeah. love that video it's that so, so good it's so bad, man. Oh, God. I re- wow. It's these extra mechanics which make it interesting, though, I think. Like, even yeah. if you're a victim to it, it's still, at the end of the day... Like, I, like last day of my mode, the only time I died was when I wasn't paying attention and I got speared off the Vark tunnel into multi. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Happens to everyone. It's rough. Um, so, I don't think there's of, much difference here, though, with the... Um, yeah. Skull a, lot bank this, keys and, a lot of this is just describing... Um, I'm just skimming for it. It's describing it's the what three life system. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. So the three life change. system is the first new bit. There's, there is a big change in there though. The um, when you skull, you only now skull for five minutes. It used to be fifteen minutes. So oh, that's like, so good. it's it's a lot less risky sculling up. So a lot more people might actually do that. That's good. That's encouraging people to. Do you still get a like skull that. when attacking a skulled person too? I'd assume so. Yeah. Is that still five minutes? So it's like yeah, yeah. It's both five minutes. So if you skull up, you mm. skull for five minutes. Okay. So right. I think uh, this right here is probably one of the biggest changes, and I'll, I'll read it out, and then we can go over how we feel about this. So they've changed it now to a free life system. One of the biggest changes to Demo Mode Reborn is the free life system. This new approach should amplify the now biting survival aspect to bottom clenching new heights. Who wrote this, bro? Some absolute <laughs> pervert, dude. <laughs> it says <laughs> bottom clenching. Who the fuck was this, man? Uh, here's how it works. Each player starts their dead man adventure with free lives. Upon dying uh, through any means, not just PvP, so PVM as well, you lose a life. A non-PVP death is exactly the same as in the main game. A gravestone appears at that place. You perish, and you have to reclaim your items. In a PVP death, you'll keep your free protected items. Four with prayer effects. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, it's not just a case of you lose everything like you used to. You actually protect free items plus your plus one. Uh, the rest of the new. items you... Sorry? Uh, that is new. I didn't even realize that mm-hmm. yep. as well. You usually get the rest- wiped. The rest of the items you have equipped will go to the player who defeated you alongside the bank key containing the top 10 most viable items in your bank. Um, I'm not sure if this is in here. I'm guessing it probably is. But do either of you know off the top of your head, if you're Skulled and you die, do you lose all of your items? Or is that Skulled where you protect up to four items? I think you can have a plus one so you can protect item and protect your VLS. Like yep. Based on my understanding of this. Yeah, okay. that's what I think as well. I'm not sure. Interesting. 
Uh, should you lose your your final life in PvP, the contents of your safety deposit key plus for a minimum most viable banked items up to 28 uh, will instead go to the BKR. Treat those lives carefully. There is no XP loss on death until your last life has been lost. Uh, losing your last life has consequences. Stay alert when leaving safe zones. Uh, you'll respawn with a fresh supply of lives. All attuned and unattuned relics are lost. I wonder if people can take those because they're only allowed to be traded on the Grand Exchange. I'm guessing they just disappear. Yeah, yeah I think they disappear. Probably. You're presented with a new tier 2 sigil to choose from. Combat XP is fully reset. So if you're a max player, you go back to having like level 1 attack strength and everything, which is just absolutely nuts. Uh, all items within your bank and safety deposit box are wiped. So even Very your... Evil. Dude, people are going to be mewling so hard on this dead man mode. Like, you know, anyone with a brain is going to trade their stuff over. 10% of all skilling experience is lost. Doesn't seem too harsh. Uh, quest progress is not reset. Whatever quest you complete during the season will stay done permanently. Honestly, so I'm really in love with those rules. And the thing about muling is I did read that apparently they're going to be very strict on muling. So if you are watching the podcast and you think, hey, Rexy said it's okay, don't don't mule. They might well, get I don't, right. I don't know, actually. Have they said that you can't mule? Because they said it yeah, a while I back. Think you in could. Here. It mm -hmm. says you can't mule. Yeah, you can't mule. They want it as risky as... As yeah, it's bannable. Possible. Okay. Well, it, say, it says it's bannable. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Um, I, uh, yo, what's up? Why do you want us to say what we think about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what, do you guys, what do you guys think? How do you feel about the free live system? It's quite a change. Um, it's a huge change. Um, I, I really don't like it because I think it's super punishing when constant feedback in the past has been death is too punishing. Like, why are we losing XP? That's why people don't lose XP when they're unschooled nowadays. And this is like... I mean, it's, it's good for me because, like, last Lev Man, I died once, so this would be absolutely fine. Um, but I just think it's way too punishing for getting loads of new players into the game. And also, the, I, could, I could live with the three life thing. I think that's... It's okay. Like, I don't think it's great for the game mode, but I think it's okay. Um, the thing I hate the most is that you protect items when you die, so you don't get all the stuff when you kill somebody. If someone leaves a raid with a Tebow, a VLS, and like a toxic trident with black dehyde, guess what you get? You get black dehyde if, it, if it's not the last death. And that is just so against the spirit of Deadman Mode, and it's just really anti-PK update. And I just hate that so much. And like, yes, you do get all their deposit box and everything when they die for the last time, but I will bet so much money that people aren't going to be dying for the last time to normal PKs. When I'm on my last life, I'm just going to suicide to one of my friends and they can have my stuff. And then, like, you can just, like, rebuild after that. There's no, there's no point running around on your last life. You may as well suicide at that point, in my opinion. I just think yeah. it's... I, I think some of this stuff sounds good in theory, but I just think it's way too savage in the long run. Like, a full, a full wipe with all your XP... Your level 3... You go up to Lumbridge Bank, you have nothing. You don't even have, like, your potato seeds or anything. you got nothing in your deposit <laughs> no, box. No potato that's seeds, when, man. And that's when you just log out. Um, Never log I back think it's in. <laughs> way, it's, just way, it's way too brutal, along with, it, along with having singles plus as well. Like, that is a huge change, which makes everything so much more dangerous. I, I think this is... It's a really brave move to make. I think it's going to really affect the the population of the game. I've suggested in the past that you should have an optional hardcore mode where you have one life, but you get perks for playing on hardcore mode, but it's an option you choose on Choose for Island. And you do get reset if you die as a hardcore, but you can also play it as a normal account. I think that would have been better, but there's just not time to change things like that now. So yeah, it's definitely going to make things a lot in, it's going to be interesting and change a lot of things, but I don't think this is going to result in the most players playing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think he's done a great job of explaining. Like, I don't think there's much to add other than if we think about what it kind of contributes to the game mode. I think it won't make people carry on playing. It will just make people quit. So it's it is a very brave move, and I think they're hoping it's so addictive that people are like, you know what, I died, but I've still got 98 herbal. Ore. I can go make pots, or whatever, to make money back. But we'll see. It's it's a very risky move. So, I don't know, man. 
Honestly, yeah. I really enjoy the three line system. Um, I, I do think the biggest problem is snowballing. So that person I was talking about, who's going to be playing fifty hours and peeing in jugs, and they exist. They really do. It's not a joke. These people exist. They're probably in clans. They're going to snowball. <laughs> You're talking about me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're going to snowball and they're not going to lose any lives and they're just going to constantly farm these people who are just not playing as much. But it's dead man mode, right? It should be risky. I think the the worlds that are set up in brackets kind of help fall back on that. I think it'd be really cool though if you're on your third life, you just fucking you just your account dies and you just and you're right on the high scores and that's it and you just got to wait till the tourney. I would that would be super brutal though. Um mm. I just as me as a streamer streaming this live, it's gonna be funny watching me die. Uh, but I feel like I'm gonna be called a rat quite a lot by those killing me. I just I don't know if I'm gonna be able to take that. So man. here's a real quick question then. So have they announced if there's gonna be the um like catch up XP where in the past you die and then you can regain the XP that you formerly had really fast? I don't, don't think, think that's so. gonna, I don't think that's going to be a mechanic, but what they've said is you've got to remember that you have the sigils coming later, which will mean that it's way faster to rebuild. But like my mm. point against that is no one wants to have to re like rebuild their XP. It's just like the most disgusting thing ever to go and have to train your pair up again. Like, yeah. People really hate that. Man, start like I think they hate it because they can get farmed by high levels, but I think people love that like XP boost and training. So if you give them these bracketed worlds, I feel like we might actually see people want to rebuild, depending on yeah. how good the loot is and how fast experience is. If it's still ass, then probably not. But if it's like a private server or something, I think people are gonna have a lot of fun. Um, if they don't rage mm -hmm. quit. <laughs> Which they might, honestly, they might yeah. rage quit. I just think overall it's too brutal. And also, oh. one thing we haven't mentioned is PVM deaths count. Everyone is, every single person is now that. playing a hardcore. Like, I love that. Kind of. Oh, it's so nice because PVM, honestly, like PVMers are going to have a lot more fun in this game mode. Or not a lot, but as much fun as PKers. Because if you say you want to build a certain account with that bracket and say you've got all the quests done, you reset yourself, now you're just chilling mm. in like the 70 world. Because I know people who can do sarah god wars on a 70 right these people are going to be able to show off their pvm skills and have a bunch of fun on these in these bracketed worlds and if you die it's it's harsh it is very harsh man so the top tier pvmers should be stepping up for this dead man mode i, I cannot yeah. wait to watch what they accomplish like if rice cup was playing oh i wonder what he could do man yeah i hope he knows we're thinking about him have fun over there rice. <laughs> it does well, sound rice very didn't he yeah, he did actually. He um, may play this time because I think he really enjoyed the PVM aspect of it, but with single plus, I don't know if he'd enjoy it as much because it pretty much just defeats everything he wants to do. But you're right, like, this is a big change. Uh, it completely changes everything. Like, everything that Demo Mode was in terms of, like, deaths and so forth has changed. But I'm going to be honest, I'm trying to stay quite optimistic because I feel like change is what Demo Mode needs. And, I mean, at the very least, I'm glad they're trying something new. So, I'm going to I'm gonna try to stay optimistic about these updates. Um, I, I think it's better than just throwing the old Deadma mode straight back in. And also, in terms of people, like, craving and being super addicted to Deadma mode this time around, we haven't had it for a year and two months. People have been dying for this to come out. So, I don't know. I, I think there will be people that get to, like, max combat lose all of their XP and go back to level 1 and they're just done with the game. But I think at the same time, there's probably going to be a lot of people that are just they're just so thirsty for this. And they're probably just going to, you know, they're just going to get on it. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's move on to the combat level worlds because this just, is also... So, and you got something to add, mate? Yeah, sorry, just quick. On, on being optimistic, one more good thing is if you're scold and you die for your first two deaths, I don't think you lose XP. So yeah, it might right? actually encourage people to PK, you know? Yeah. yeah that's oh, what you it, don't lose XP for your first... Oh my god, I'm just completely missing all these small little minor facts that are making the game way better. Oh my god, that's, that's, that's actually good. That's really it's, good. It's like, there's, there's, it's strange because it's like, there are things in there which, like, incentivize people to go PKing now with, like, the five-minute skull, and like you just said, you don't lose XP and you can protect your items and so forth. But then... It's, it comes at a price, and that price is that that third death, it's like, 
it may be the last moment of this game for you because I listen when you died in the past and you were like 99 attack strength and defense you used to be able to protect like a few of your skills I haven't seen this anywhere in this but I'm assuming that's completely gone now because they're just saying all of your XP is lost right so it was never too bad back in the day because you could protect like strength or something like that and your attack would go down to like say 70 maybe 80 and you'd very quickly be able to get it back up with the um with like the bonus xp from losing xp that you currently had or had previously that's completely gone so there's it, it it's a completely different balance now because it's like in some ways there's more incentive to go pking uh, you're much more likely to be able to kill somebody anywhere. Like, the worst place I think of is uh, the Chaos Druids underneath Edgeville. Like, that is AIDS down there trying to kill people, because everything down there attacks you. Skellies, uh, bloody Chaos Druids, you got spiders, you got fucking Earth Warriors. It's just, it's hell. It's really difficult, whereas now, you're not safe down there. And, like, to be it's honest with be. you, I, I kind of wish, like, I hope there's a lot of people that haven't heard this so we can just go down there and they're gonna think they're safe because they're not like they're done like they're a long way away from a bank and like there's a few escapes sure but you know god and that could actually Dude. there could be some really good lures in this dead man mode like i'm thinking about getting a load of boys through the moss giant tunnel in the multi spot just chilling there with like d spears and msbs see if we can get you some know, rims to come through if i could if i could just add that lure Actually, I, I don't want to take credit for it, but I, I believe that was me. Original Dead Man mode. I had the first two Dragon Spears in the game. I had all my viewers uh, off stream with Ancients, and I'm like, bro, everyone's at Moss Giants. Let's send down a noob first week. Run them up. Just start attacking somebody so if they attack back, they're not scold. Run up the ladder, which is multi, like Rexy said. Then we spear them to the side, and we just bah, murder them. And we were making a mill each night. No one was doing it. I just got to <laughs> say, man... Those were the best days. Oh my god! Oh. And then I think it got easily taken over by clans once, like they realized what we were doing. But still, we had a good four or five days there, just absolutely murdering people, man. Yeah. So See, that's, the thing, that's the thing. When you change so many things, like there will be new, interesting, like um, not ecosystems isn't the right word, but like, you know what I mean, like. Yeah, yeah. Like, Rats, I mean, I think it's fair to say, like, probably the one of the biggest mechanics the people who were non PKers in Dead Mood used to escape was NPCs. Like, that's completely yeah. gone now. So it's like people are gonna have to think outside the box. It's like if you're going somewhere like the Slayer Tower, where is an instance you can go to to escape? I instantly think of like the grotesque guardians, like you can go inside of there, I assume. Or having the agility level to be able to go up and down the spikes to try and tell you out with the time. But like it changes a lot. It sounds very punishing. And uh, yeah, I'm quite excited for this. I, I yeah. actually am quite optimistic. I think this sounds good. Um, anyways, I think my I think my main issue is it is with it is a single plus and this three life shit. If it was one, I would be like, oh, okay, like that's good. It changes the meta. But because it's both, I just think it's slaughter fest. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So you're like trying to you're trying to make con you're like in a content creator's mindset. You want to go far. You want to win this. No, I'm, I'm for thinking me, about the no, no, no. This is this is great for me. Like I'm probably not gonna die that much. Like we'll realistically, see. like we'll like in the in the, in this mode, like none of all all four of us here. We're like we're good. We are good at the game. I'm talking about like the average person that's hopping on just to play, and like they do just DDS people and run into chaos druids, and that's like the fun they have with it. But now that's like <laughs> it's just eliminated because like you've just got. Any, oh, I don't know. It's just going to be really difficult for them to survive. Dude, and I, 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 I agree that I agree that it's really nice to get back to the old dead man stuff of like taking a fire talisman and going in there, going in a quest escape. I'm, yes. I'm a massive fan of that. But I just think you'd have that if you just brought singles plus. You don't need this three life thing to, to like get that back. I don't know. Dude, no, I, I see your, I see your concerns. I really do, man. But I I'm just thinking. Oh, wait. 
if Mint wasn't on this podcast, he would be one of those kids dying at Chaos Druids, dude. There's no way this man was reading this bro. blog, bro. <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking, like, how many people aren't going to understand what Single Plus is? I always, I get that question when they watch my stream. What is Single Plus? It's been out for so long. So many people don't understand it. It's only in a very small, small part of the wild. They're going to go out playing Dead Man Mode. Buy or attacking a monster, and some dude's just gonna one tap him off the monster, and they're gonna be like, "What just happened? What, I was in combat, right?" And they're just gonna get dumpstered, and that's gonna happen to so many people. And I'm probably mm. gonna be the one doing it because I just—it's a spec rusher's dream, right? Mm. I don't even want to brid; I just want to rush people mm. and and just one tap them. Oh, so Didn't like ninety percent of people say they understood how the rev mechanics worked, and that singles plus. So ninety percent of people should understand it in dead mode we'll see who the who the real people that understand it and who are the fake it's, understanders it's 90 percent of the people who know how to vote right that's not the <laughs> yeah. silent majority they don't even know what mm. voting systems are <laughs> like what is this Ooh, new game mode oh nice chaos drew it's all undead what happened yeah. i don't know <laughs> so in regards to this like for life thingy how do you guys think this could be solved. Like, is there something like maybe making it so you lose 50% of your combat XP? Would that be fair? Would that help the situation? Or like, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, I, I said before, and I've said this multiple times before, like to the J mods, like you should have an optional, optional mode to play as a hardcore player. So you have the choice. You can play as a normal player or a hardcore player. And if you choose to play as a hardcore player, Say you have one life, three lives, whatever many lives, you get like 5% extra damage and accuracy. So that's the meta, but it's a lot more risky. You take that risk and you get that reward. But for the people that want to play a little bit more casually and like have consistent progress on their combats and stuff, then they can just play on the normal mode. I think choice is, has been a massive thing for old school RuneScape, so why not give us some choice in Deadman between modes? Yeah. That, 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 that would be better in my opinion, but we'll see. Maybe it's like a really weird thing that they, they've done some analysis on how people think. And if people get reset to like level 70 combat stats, they quit. But if they get reset to level one, they're like, yeah, I'm going to rebuild. Maybe they've got <laughs> some like data on that or something. I, know, you know, me, make, I think you're onto something because yeah. the amount of people that love starting at Tutorial Island, like they just get an erection instantly. Like, oh, Tutorial Island? Yes. Level yeah. three, chopping trees again, training a hobby. Yeah. It's and nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah, you do keep your quests, and in fairness, like in defense of Jagex, they have the world thing that we haven't talked about yet, which does help out somewhat. Yes. And that's, yeah. that, that was the whole idea behind this three-life system. So yeah. isolating just the three lives, it sounds like a, a bad idea from my perspective. But when you include the world thing and the sigils and stuff, it's not as bad. I would yeah. like to see that as the Deadman mode season continues, these three lives become your only lives, right? Like two weeks in, now it's like, oh... Okay, now if I die one more time, my account gets deleted. But that's just me. I want to see how this plays out. I want to see the world burn. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, well, I mean, we'll I'm okay we'll with it. To tie into the third death, so something that they are doing, like you just said, are the combat level worlds. So I'm going to just read this. We'll talk about it afterwards. Another drastic change with the demo mode Reborn is the introduction of combat level worlds. As the name suggests, they can only be accessed by, by players of a certain level, ensuring that you'll always be faced against players with similar battle, battle prowess. Uh, no more stompings at the hands of XP behemoths. It's kind of funny, man, because like one of the brackets I see here is level 3 versus level 35, so yeah. we'll see, we'll see. Um... Want to stay as safe as possible while completing a particularly risky quest? Utilize the combat level restrictions to ensure you're the highest level allowed on the world. Be warned though, if it's anything like PvP and the rest of RuneScape, crafty players will be scheming ways to create the most powerful builds possible with any given combat tier. Mm -hmm. And the following combat bracket worlds are, so level 3 to level 35, level 36 to level 70, 71 to 100 and 101 to 126 so basically if you're anywhere between these levels you will only be able to access access the world which is there for that combat level which basically in summary means that you won't get a level 126 attacking a level three that won't be a thing anymore so i think this sounds interesting again it's a change it's a big change and I think it adds a layer of fun because I feel like there's going to be people that, you know, it's like between level three and 35, 
probably some of your best KO ability is going to be like, I don't know, like fire, fire bolting at certain points, then chaos bolting and so forth. It's like, I can imagine there being people that will just clown around in this and they're just going to run around killing people as like level 35s. Like, mm-hmm. I think oh, yeah. that that sounds fun. This adds like an extra layer to it. And the first thing you- that I thought of was level 100 combat. You can make a half decent med level at that combat where you're basically like probably 99 strength for close to around about 70 75 attack depending if you fancy getting an ags or whatever you could probably just go with a 60 attack or you could be like a zerker like this is actually this is kind of cool i like the sound I think of people this. always wanted builds in dead man mode i'm just thinking like that low level bracket world could you imagine a dark bower right if you just pop mm. a dark bower on somebody <laughs> You're dead. Or like I was talking about this earlier, apparently Zora is going to be back in this dead man mode. And in the very early dead man modes, if you guys remember Venom, that was quite a problem. That was not great. That was very, very, if you saw a Serp Helm, your, your butt cheek squeezed, right? There was no other reaction. That was terrifying. So if you were able to get a defense build and put a, a, a Venom item on him and you're just Venoming people in level 35 worlds, they're going to get one tick from the Venom alone. So we could see some pretty funny builds. It is uh, the world ragged. So I've just read a question in my chat and somebody basically is saying level 35 defense tank, maybe matter for qualifying until the last days. Um, I'm just curious. Do we review know if they've announced whether there will be different finals depending on combat bracket or is it no. everybody's no. in the same one? Okay. It's just Everyone's one. in the same one. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, do, what do you think of this solo with the, uh, the combat worlds? I quite like it because I think it gives a lot of variety to Deadman. It's something that if you quit, if you played the first few, you quit and you're like, fuck Deadman, like it's just a sweat fest. You look at this and you'd be like, oh, I can make a baby pure and like, com- like have fun with it and come PKing and stuff. And it's not as much of a grind fest. So I really like that it's split it up like that. I think this is a lot better way of doing this than um, having XP caps, all that sort of thing. I think it's a really good idea in terms of that. The one. Like, overall, I think it's a great idea, by the way. The one negative, I think, is that I just hope they reduce the worlds fast enough and don't have too many worlds in each tier because otherwise it's going to be, everyone's going to be so split up all over the different, like, bracket worlds and then the worlds within those bracket worlds and it'll be really hard to find people in PK. I think part of what makes Deadman great is it feeling really alive and active, like you can run into people all the time and it's not just 150 people a world, like, dead. So I think yeah. that's a really important thing that they have to get right. And I wonder. I wonder in if my they opinion, need they to have do it. that because of, because of the single plus. Like from my experience, when when demo mode goes dead, you still always find people doing Slayer in the Slayer Tower and stuff. So I wonder if that will be an issue with having to reduce worlds, considering that they can just be attacked now. I don't know. When it goes really dead, though, it is really dead. I don't mind probably people... knows. Like you hop at a spot, you hop all twelve worlds and find nobody, and then that took you like ten, twenty minutes. Like yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm gonna peer into the future real quick and think if these clans, you know, the the people who pee in jugs, they are just constantly maxed, and we're caught a couple weeks in, and they're camping these big parts like the Slayer Tower, so they get all the whips. And what's going to stop them, right? If it's single plus, you can't box, you can't farm unless it, they're there. And they're always there. <laughs> it's, yeah, but you only play this game mode for a month. They're going to be the there. Whole, that's the whole point in demo mode. It's like, right? It's like you either get or you get gone. It's dog eat right. dog. So it's like, if you want to well, go thinking, kill those abyssal demons, you better have yeah. yourself a hybrid set with you. Like, you better be PKing, or otherwise, but, you know, you're just a punching bag at that point. But Tom, yep. you think like people are gonna always do Slayer, but what if they can't? That's what I'm saying. It's like, what if they but, get reset and they rebuild and they come back to the Slayer cave and they're just it, just, right? it changes then that, the map. That, that's, that's, changes. that's on them. Yeah, you have to like it's a personal choice to do Slayer and to go for a whip. You can always buy it on the Grand Exchange. Like your money maker doesn't have to be Slayer. Like your everyone. The thing with Dead Man is sometimes people have a bit of a problem of getting over this boundary of thinking that they have to go and acquire each bit of gear themselves. Like I have to go and get my whip. Because the whip's good. Like, like you can just pick Mort Meyer Fungus as a level 30 and then buy a whip on the Grand Exchange if you wanted to. 
Oh my god! I'm completely, I'm completely down with people camp in areas. Right, it's dead man mode. Have fun for that month. But I'm just saying, like, I don't think Slayer is going to keep this game active. I feel like these clans are going to get on top of these areas, and no one's going to be doing Slayer unless you're in a different combat bracket world. But if they have a, an account mastering that world, right, and they're still in the same clan, and it really is a real well thought out clan. Apparently, <laughs> they just got every world covered, but it could still be the same thing, and they just camp these areas in every world, um, which is cool. But I, I'm just peering in the future. I think that might be a reality we see in this dead man mode. Yeah, like of course, like areas which give you great resources, like whips and stuff, are going to be fought over. That's like part and parcel of the mode. Mm -hmm. um, but you're, you're forgetting that there's not just one single clan that controls everything, and because it's single plus, like if there's a, a team of five people versus a team of five hundred people, but the five people are better than five hundred, then they'll happily go to the Slayer Tower and farm them all day long because it's just single I hope. plus. I hope, but I swear to God, every dead man mode, the clans, they like buddy up. They're like, oh, we don't want to fight you. We want to, we we're friends now, right? We're all, oh, it's friend man mode, right? So what if they all unite and they're just hoarding items <laughs> together and it's just clan yeah, man that, mode that, again? I don't think, I don't think, I don't think they will. Like, no, they can, I hope, nah. it, it, that no. doesn't normally happen <laughs> because what happens is in banks, you say, yeah, we're off each other because there's no point. But then when you're far, like if you, if, if like, Frontline or whatever they see me on my own, they'll come try and kill me. You know, like okay. there's no offing people far from banks. I like so that. I hope that. I hope different. it is just fuck the wild west out there, and they're gunning yeah. and running, and they're not friending each other. I really do. Right. I think so. I'm just saying that could be a possibility. Right. Friend man mode. Could a really exist good. Again. A really good thing about this combat bracket is if you're PKing, you know you can attack any any white dot. Because in the past you're running around as level 120, and you're like. Do I want to get a 30 minute skull? Do I want to kill a level 3? And you, you're very like cautious about who you attack. However, now, you're running around in a 71 to 100 bracket. You're like, yep, any single white dot I see, I'm attacking that. Yeah, so yeah. that should be really fun as well. Oh, you're, you're making them lose lives as well. I know one's going to be running around naked questing. I quite like that as well. So mm -hmm. checking yeah. all those sort of spots is more worth it. I mm. just had a thought, by the way. Can you guys imagine how disgusting the barrows is gonna be with single plus yeah yeah like oh my god i think barrows is gonna be like it may be quite scarce if i was in a clan i would be planning to lock that down i'd be in discussions right now but with the different worlds that we have with the combat brackets if you were to stay in like 36 to 70 like you could effectively just make an account that just runs barrows all day like there will there will genuinely be people and i think this is a great thing these worlds allow people to plan to the point where it's like okay i'm gonna do this activity when i'm this combat level when i reach this combat level i'm just gonna grind the barrows get as much as i can and then once i have everything i need for the finals i just go straight into the next combat bracket and so forth I really like that. I, I think that that changes things in such a huge way. But Barrows is not going to be safe because it's usually no. a haven for getting a box off. But like you're done there now. Mm. God, you're making me excited, bro. The more you guys talk, the more I'm starting to realize how crazy and complex Mate, this game yeah. is actually going to be. I'm buzzing. I'm so yeah. excited think about, for this. Think about all these areas, though, and then you think there's not actually that many elite PKers. Like... In, in a dead man mode world like normally like you just have like your few from each team that like everyone just calls as soon as they see someone in risk but like there's so many spots like you said barrows slayer tower like i don't know even even stuff like trying to get zenites and things like if you're there trying to kill those monkeys like there's just no escape because it's multi on one side as well so it's just gonna yeah. be so brutal <laughs> Well, you say there's not a uh, lot of elite PKers, but maybe those dead memos didn't really encourage those PKers to come out. And maybe single plus and the non-boxing thing is going to encourage a lot of these people who do crazy switches. You just mistake them for yeah. AHKers all well, the time. I, they could be coming out. I more, I more meant that the elite PKers are like in historically are concentrated around certain hotspots because there's no point PKing on your own in Tavoli Dungeon. Gotcha. Like that. so, okay. so like they're yeah. all in Edgeville. They're all like in the bit of the Slayer Tower where it's not monster aggro and stuff like that, you know, like downstairs and things. That's right. It is kind of annoying that you always see these high-level PKers camp in Edgeville, but now they should definitely be more spread out. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. there's nothing stopping them. And I hope they all upload videos. Seriously, if you don't have... Get Hypercam at least and upload this. I want to watch it. I want to watch you destroy people in different areas. I don't know why they don't upload. Some of these people are insane. Upload some vids, man. I want to watch them destroy.
I'm so I'm so excited for this. I remember like the first dead mammals that I did when people just didn't know what they were doing. We were all bad and no one really understood the rules. And just roaming around Varrock in the weirdest places. Like I, I would do you know where East Dragons is, obviously. I'd go all the way down south to the ditch. And then when you're at that ditch, you can go far east, where people used to in the BH worlds, they used to do like the um the embling okay. emblem, all of that stuff. Ah. I would always find people down there sculled up just waiting out skulls who obviously attacked somebody and ran away like i'm so ready for this and also that combat bracket right there where was it it was uh the lower one so 36 to 70 that's designed for pures okay mm. like bro make a one defense i think everybody's probably gonna start as like a one defense pure I, I, I think so, at least. And then when you hit, like, this close to 70, you start getting some, you know, get some defense XP. But, like, you could genuinely do some serious damage on a, a one defense. Monkey Manus, Lost City Done, Desert Treasure. Just roaming around Blitz DDS and people, they're just... There's gonna be some carnage in this dead mm. mode. Like, big, big time. That's awesome. Yo. Speaking of, like, original Dead Man mode, did you guys have a favorite hiding spot? Mine was the Mind Altar. Me and my boys would hide there after destroying uh, Hill Giants. <laughs> yeah, I used to have um, a Soul's Bane quest. If you complete the quest, you can go down into the... And you it's not an instance. sweaty, sweaty <laughs> man. Oh. That was my favorite. That's not even the original. I did that for, like, six of them. <laughs> I used to uh, hide in Edgeville Bank. It was really fun. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you were <laughs> really good guy. Don't want to attack you. <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to think. I I definitely I used to PK and like I used to PK a lot of Remington in the house portal because people would come out of there and they would never expect to be attacked. And you'd occasionally mm. get somebody come along that was like a max or something like that, and like their team would come as well. It got a little bit heated, but I, I really liked PKing around like the crafting guild and stuff, like around that area. And then you also had access to uh Brim is it Brimhaven where Cerberus is? I think it is Brimhaven. Is that Brimhaven? Yeah, do you know no. where Cerber? No, Taverly. Sorry, Taverly oh. Dungeon. Brimhaven. Where that? That's in bloody Karamja, man. Karamja. So yeah, you had access to like that whole strip right there. So I'd usually find. To be honest with you, man, I I didn't used to hide very often. Okay, I would. Just oh, that's be all I it. did. I was terrified, <laughs> bro. I was. Yeah, you I was genius and run. Ah, that was though. We were like one newbie back in those days. <laughs> So good. I missed it. I missed the days where you could go and buy things in Varrock and then watch people get dark bowed from the cooking guild. Do you, do you guys remember oh, that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mark, <laughs> man. I remember, dude. I remember killing him, and that's that's probably my most disliked video on YouTube. <laughs> oh man, yeah, he was oh. he was really abusing that, and then he got uh, he got ganged. He I got thought ganged of another up. place. I used to uh, I used to check and also go out there sometimes just to weigh out my my skull on top of the doodle arena because that place is massive and a lot of people couldn't be bothered like run into the far corner to see if someone was there i remember this one time i got hit by um it was two clan two clan mates and i was a low level i was actually like a uh i guess i was like a med level at that point but i had like really high range and uh they got on me thinking i was hiding out a skull when in fact i was hunting and uh, I, I can't remember what the name was, but yeah, I ended up uh, I ended up killing one of them, and I fucked him up so bad. And it's like you know they got on me all cocky because they're like, oh shit, we found somebody that was waiting at his skull, and uh, I ended up out DPSing him, killed him, and the little fucker dropped his whip to his friend, and I didn't uh. get the whip, so I was <laughs> I was annoyed about that because that was a good drop at the time. And then they came up to me afterwards and they were like, hey dude, we we didn't actually expect you to be any good, so. GG's. I was like, thank you, boys. Thank you, thank you, no. kindly. With the right. Robux. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I think, I I think over, overall, yeah, overall the world stuff is really good because it changes that meta. Like you said, people mm -hmm. can grind barriers on level 69 if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I think as well, sick. people will probably have different accounts for different things. Like, yeah. I'm thinking about having an account which just does Barrows and then an account which I just max and maybe do Slayer on and maybe do Raids yeah. and stuff. Because Barrows is still going to be like a huge part of the game, obviously. It's like, unless you get Ancestral from Raids, you know, which is, you're punching a little bit there. But still, it's going to be very good armor for everybody. Yeah. So... Next up, combat rule changes. In previous demo modes, players could remain relatively safe by attacking NPCs in single-way combat with little fear of being attacked by someone else. 
as a result, it was just single. It was just single plus right here, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Box and NPCs became an easy escape. You're not going to be able to do this anymore, more or less. Um, oh, they've changed some areas yeah, to this, multi-way to this single. This is huge. This is huge. Lunar Isle, Bandit Camp, Shadow Dungeons for the Desert Treasure, a Barbarian mm. Village. You're not going to be able to. Could you imagine if people were just picking people off for their lives while they're getting their 10k <laughs> cash? So they made Barbarian mm. Village single, and then White Wolf Mountain, which is um, sure, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I think I think the idea that's behind uh, making these multi areas single was that. Uh, they want to want to try and help like newer players like with their experience. So if you notice, all these locations are quest locations. So Lunar Isle for the Lunars, obviously Bandit Camp, Shadow Dungeon, there for Desert Treasure, and then Barbarian Village and White Wolf Mountain are for one small favor as part of the piety quest line. So I think what they were going for there was uh... they're trying to um, not make it clan man mode in the um, essential grinds that you have to do. So like. Nothing's essential about going and getting a whip, but like it feels like getting piety is essential because you're at a massive disadvantage if you don't do that. So I think I they're just trying to make it a bit easier for people. Like, but yeah, yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. I'm a little sad though that we have to quest so much still on a fun game mode. Like I, I never get piety, and I never want to, and I'm not doing one small favor on a non-permanent game mode. And I barely we, did on regular runes. We got quest helper now. It literally does it for mm. you. You don't True. like. I'm not worried about this, man. I'm excited to go and do DT. <laughs> it's been it's been long enough for me that I have like mentally refreshed. I'm ready to go get my fucking quest cape. Nah, I'm kidding, but like I'm ready to game. <laughs> I don't give a shit what it takes. I want to be out there. I want to make a pure. I want to go out DDS rushing and stuff like that. Like, this, yeah. I, dude, there's, a, there's a bit I'm later on the quest thing. I'm way mm -hmm. too excited for this, man. I think I might actually do DT this time, though. Honest, I'm not doing one small favor. I know Solo is. He, he does all that. He does every time. I don't know how he does. I've done DS two the past two times. Oh my god! Yeah. I always it's watch your videos. I'm point. like, how is this man doing this? Really, it's it's brutal. But I might actually do DT this time. So. Dude, that's gonna be so much fun. DS two with uh, singles plus. Ugh. You're gonna kill everyone. Holy <laughs> moly! The I'm thing wrong. is, like, I do you know? It's funny because, like, I feel like camping down quest locations like sure it's an easy way to get a kill but god is it not scummy man it's like you're, you're fighting people what, that are what, trying to complete scummy, there's quests. nothing scummy about it bro right. it's just the food, it, the it, kind, it, the kind, no, it kind of is man because you know they have to go there <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah, it's, it's, it's like strategy, it's strategy. <laughs> i just I, i'm threat. just I'm so used to it at this point. I've been playing my PvP fix is Tarkov, and like people that just like camp down quest routes and quest items are just like <laughs> they're publicly shamed, like <laughs> scummy behavior, man. You know. So you know why Solo yeah. likes this because I remember in his videos he would camp quest areas. I remember that you yep. get a lot of kills with your your friends there, man. So Shiloh but I did Village. Like watching or was that Max? Yeah. So I can't remember. That's both That's of us. We're both yeah. Both <laughs> You're the same team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised they changed. I, I I will say to add to that, I was annoyed when they changed that when they patched it because you guys weren't really abusing like you weren't abusing shit. You were just taking advantage of like some very smart fairy crafting. Like somebody in your clan must have just been like, "Yo, everybody who wants to compete and stand a chance needs to get piety. They're gonna have to run through this multi spot." Like that was that was a class act, but. I was, I was a little bit upset when they patched that. I feel like it wasn't fair, to be honest with it, you. I think they should have left it. It was also for Venge as well, and tanks were like a huge meta back then, so if you didn't do Shiloh Village, you couldn't get Vengeance, so that just completely ruined all of those uh, builds. But it was, yeah, it was literally like 150 hours of locking down an area, and we literally had like different levels of alerts. Uh, we'd have, we've got like a massive group uh, chat where if if we knew people were rushing everyone would get called you'd get woken up you'd have to get on your pc and you'd have to do the, the fight and it, it was honestly it's probably like one of my top three memories of dead man ever because it was so much fun just with the boys having fun good time you know it was amazing was that was that on the tournament world yep 
Okay, so yeah, they shouldn't have patched that then because that's that's where sweaty no, they, people go to play. They, I mean, they, they, they didn't patch it. Yeah, they didn't patch it during the thing, but afterwards they changed it to single combat for the oh. entirety of RuneScape, which I actually okay. do agree that they should have changed it afterwards because otherwise okay. later Deadmans would just devolve around who can camp Wait, this the most and stuff thought, like that. I thought they did a hot fix and changed they it. They did. So, so, so they, 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 did, they, they did. What? Yeah, but not in the actual, um, they, in there the actual was like, tournament. There was a weird thing after the tournament where there was like a, a couple of hours where people could go do it. So then we all sat oh, underneath. This is, yeah, this is, um, this is a different thing. So they had the original tournament that went all like... Oh, yeah. Um, it was mostly the entire time. And then the problem was with that one that it ended with half the people getting in the 1v1s dying on. Like people, like including myself. And then <laughs> you got people like Magda getting he he healed for all this health and all this sort of like, yeah. like buggy stuff. So they had a rerun of this same tournament. But in the rerun, there was three hours where you could um, do stuff with your team and like do any final like corrections because that's like the last save game they had. And in that one, they decided to make it single combat uh... in the uh, Rishilia's tomb, and which meant all these people got piety that would never have had it if it was the same as the original which I, for, for example someone like me i thought that was really unfair because mm -hmm. i got gassed out and i was somebody that had piety in the original and this was a, supposed to be a rerun of the tournament and lo and behold i ended up going and dying to somebody who got piety because they changed it so it's not it wasn't a rerun for me like if he hadn't have had piety maybe i would have won that fight so like yeah. i was like sorry about that because they changed hey. they changed the thing if it's a tournament, they should obviously never touch the rules, man. That should just be a thing. Yeah. Unless it's something super buggy, but then they should just rewipe it. But RuneScape's not a perfect game, so none of this will ever happen. Yeah. But, but I, I, agree. I agree with the, I agree with them making it single for the long term because mm -hmm. not everyone wants to fight over the same quest location every single time. That's part yeah. of changing the matter. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So they've also done something here with the XP multiplier. Uh, for this season of Dead Man Reborn, we want to ensure that players can quickly level up an account ready for the final day of the tournament, especially since there's a high possibility you'll lose your last life near the end of the season. Fully reset in your combat experience, plus some of you might simply start the season late. Either way, we want everyone to have a decent chance of becoming a season champion. We're going to increase the XP rates of all skills by 10 times, including any reward XP you would normally receive from quest and or XP lands. Uh, this increase applies throughout Gilanor. Combat XP will increase even further based on the combat level world you are playing in. Level 3 to level 35 world, 10 times XP, 36 to 70, 15, 71 to 120, and 101 to 126, 25. 25 times i believe is like the tournament xp they did in the last tournament uh it was 15 times oh yeah. really wow yeah so say, it is more yeah. but you gotta think about for most of your account you're at 15 20 times ish but like yeah. the, the big thing the big thing here that like if you're like reading between the lines or like if you just read it so slowly you might not have realized is that the um quest xp was never multiplied in the old dead man's and because there are so few quests also completed, right? It's hard to piss everyone off. You could just do Witch's House straight away, and you'll get sixty-five thousand hit points experience, and you'll be level forty-something hit points in the zero to thirty-five combat bracket. So you'll pretty much be like really not very killable. Like if you if you want to be safe and like with your lives and then figure your stuff out, that is a great thing to do. You already you ruined like Witch's House a away. crazy strat now, bro. You should have kept that to your. That's a crazy. Yeah, I mean, strat, it's bro. pretty like. He's making it's pretty a good. Like, yeah. Nah, that's, that's big brain right there. At least to me. Yeah. At least to me. Maybe so like, for anyone else. that is like worried about our three lives and stuff, if you do that, like you'll be like pretty sweet for a bit. If yeah. you got some food. So basically, <laughs> it's going to be like a fucking rag fest at the witch's house. Yeah. The sound so, if you're, so if you're a team, you should go and camp that shit and make everyone lose their lives. <laughs> so Scum! Be I mean, what are you accomplishing if you're wasting people's lives in the first world, though? They're just going to be in that world anyways. I mean... Uh, it's still fun though. Oh. I I wonder, like, did they talk about this in the in the live stream? Like, what if you're level sixty nine and you and you level up to level eighty without logging out and you just start demolishing people? Right? Oh, you instantly gonna... get logged. You instantly yeah. get logged out the moment you get, become level seventy one. Did you, you use that as an that escape, escape threat then? Yeah. Right. Uh, if you well, can... I mean, that's a really. I think your XP. They were talking about potentially locking your XP while you're in combat. 
And also, also, if you're escape, if you're escaping using that, it means your XP is unlocked. So if you're like teleporting around the game, you, you'll just end up randomly getting a combat level and stuff from killing things. Oh, I did not know that. They so were it's not really XP. that viable. So they're locking XP during combat. Then okay, all right. That's I not, no, 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 no. I, no. I don't, I don't, I don't. I, I meant um, they might lock XP in PvP combat, but like I, I don't think that's really something anyone should worry about whatsoever because. Yeah, what, well, you're just going to randomly spawn in the next world now and you're at the bottom of the barrel and you haven't really prepared just because you're trying well, to... it's better something. than getting, like, demolished by whatever you're running from, though, right? I mean, <laughs> but that's true. You would be in a, probably a worse situation uh, overall. Yeah. Mm. But I like the way they did their XP uh, strats, man. I think I'm just going to get... Because if you scroll down a little more, apparently every time you go into a different bracket of worlds, you get different quest unlocks. So maybe just camping sand crabs until you're, like, 100 in the first day is, like meta just to unlock everything real quick that's what yeah, i might you do you could do that and then just suicide down so you have all these quests done yeah or just like start gaining xp too because like your skills uh your non-combat skills are going to be affected so you can start getting those so you can start questing easier right. so there's there's a bunch of metas that i mean i cannot wait i wonder what wooks will do you think wooks is going to do something this uh dead man mode i don't know if wooks will play to be honest he's more I of a he does. He won a dead man mode. These days. We can't forget that. Well, he is a winner. Yeah. <laughs> he is okay, a winner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knows, man, with these strats. True winner. They unlock at 46 to 70 animal magnetism. That's so nice. Yeah. That's so mm. nice, man. I hate having to run all the way over to um Port Fat Mattis or whatever it's called. That's <laughs> Fat just the one track. <laughs> Dude, that's so good. And then it also says here between level 101 to 126. Uh, it says increase the access to the chest to barrow gloves. So as soon as you hit level 101, you can just straight up buy barrow gloves, which is, mm -hmm. you know, that's nice because combat bracelets aren't going to be like 100k as they always are. Mm. That's pretty good. Not bad at all. There's just a lot of a nice quality of life updates that I, I wish were in the other different modes, but I'm glad they're in this one. Man, what do you guys think about the uh, quest unlocks for the tier worlds though? Yeah, I like him. I think they should have gone a bit harder on this, though, to be honest. I think once you get to level 100, you should just get piety because no one mm -hmm. wants to do that shit again. No one. I certainly don't, really. And I don't think, yeah. I, like, I don't think you should be given all the quests, but like the main ones that everyone's done a million times. Yeah. Right. Same with Ancients, yeah. Oh, yeah, same, with, no same with Ancients. I, don't I, would, I wouldn't I mind. Like, I feel like DT is almost like, um, it's not so much a commodity right it, it's like it, it, it's kind of like if you get dt done it's like a an extra bonus it's not something everybody should have it's like if you want to have that extra level of power i feel like you should yeah. have to go out there and put some effort into getting it because dt that quest line in demo mode is like there's just death on every corner, bro. You got Necreals just waiting there in the bandit <laughs> camp. They're fucking waiting for you when you're down to the oh. shadow place. Like, troll yeah. line. What I wouldn't it's mind just hell. if they were to cut down on some of the side questing, though, right? Say, like, you don't have to do um, one small favor or dig site. Or yeah, maybe like for yeah. Heidi, you just have to do the end boss fights, right? Or do you just have to go collect? If they could just shorten some of this stuff so you don't have to do the whole cycle every time. Mm. I think we'd be onto something because I don't mind I some of the questing, but I don't want to do all of the questing. Dude, yeah. To be yeah. fair, quest like dig site that's going to be one to fifty something, fifty five mining or something, isn't it? Like oh, yeah, the, I, I think the end game requirements for stats, like the total level to get into the final, is going to be really high because well, yeah. of how easy it will be. It's going to yeah. be max combat easily. Definitely, and we've not even touched on the relics oh, yet, max. and they give a little mm, peek sure. into some of that, and it looks quite interesting. Um, so something here they have is drop rate modifier, and they're basically saying that people shouldn't have to feel like this is a chore. Um, and it basically said, we'll be increasing the drop rates of certain items by three times their normal rate. Here are a list of things we're looking to include at the moment. So all cocks, all raids one uniques, tomes of fire burnt pages, unsired from the abyssal sire, all visages... I may oh, actually man. get a visage for the first time. Can you imagine everyone with a DFS? <laughs> oh, oh, well, a lot, a lot of these are the same as the, la the last list. And it used to be 4x, mm. so they made it 3x. So some of these are actually oh. rarer this time around than last time around. Mm. Ah. This, this, uh, this was already a thing. Gold War Dungeon Uniques. Uh, 
Nightmare Uni. Ooh, the Nightmare. Ooh, dude. I'll oh, yeah, they've added the some new ones, yeah. Is there anything good from the night? What would be, well, I guess. A, volat a volatile stuff would be good for PKing. Yeah. yeah. Good. That would be insane. Could you imagine a volatile <laughs> in the 35 to 70 combat bracket? We have just 99 mage. <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> That's going to be disgusting. Oh, oh you're cutting you three? Not anymore. It's <laughs> <laughs> one hit everyone. That's going to be so fun. And no one's going to have mage levels at like that combat bracket either. So they're going to have yeah. like no defense at all. It'd be like some dude in MIF 70. Damn, God. they got TOB God. as well. Dude, we haven't had. Have we had TOB? Yeah, there was there was there was TOB last time, but barely anyone did it because the drop rates weren't improved. Oh damn, they dude, that's so. But well, they are improved this time. But you got to remember with TOB, if your team wipes, every single person loses their life because it's not oh, like yeah, three life <laughs> that's crazy. So that, I can't I can't see there being much TOB, but dude, there will obviously here, be some. Here it is, ten k, ten thousand subscribers on this podcast, and <laughs> us four. And we'll take Rice oh, Cup as I'm well. Oh. We'll go and do a TOB together. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing a teleport crystal and I'm sending that to <laughs> Don't invite me. I will let you all down. I promise. So, they've also done this for the DKs, Wildy Boss Rings, uh, the Dragon Pickaxe, Odium Melodiction Shards, uh, Revenant Uniques. Revenants are going to be in this. The Barrows, which is very nice considering what we spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gauntlet. Oh my god. Do you reckon anyone's going to go to Preferous? Oh, yeah. That's a long yeah. question. I did last time. There was a, there was a few of us there. Fucking Dude, dude that's, <laughs> that's super, super cool. Uh, clue scroll, you need Corporal Beast sigils. That's pretty big. Cerberus crystals. Yeah, What's the corp one's actually pretty huge, I think. Do you know if it was yeah. 4x last time, Monk? I don't think it was 4x. I think it was uh, normal last time. Yeah, I think it was normal. I'm not sure. So that's actually pretty huge. There'll be quite a few alleys then, I would imagine. Th this is 3x, by the way. So you'd be looking yeah. at like... That'd be insane. What, what's a sigil like? One in a thousand or something like that? Isn't it one in 5k for Ellie? I yeah, one in 5k so, yeah. for Ellie. And my, our last tournament, I think there were three or four Ellie's, was it? Yeah, so yeah, it's there there was 3x that. that. 3x that, and you've got like 10. Like <laughs> and it's all so singles at the end as well. Damn, dude, yeah. they've even got Zora uniques on free times. Oh my god, dude. We need to get some anti venoms, boys. My goodness. <laughs> uh, dragon <laughs> limbs, dragon no neck, dragon bone necklace. Who put dragon bone necklace in this? <laughs> I want to find out. That was a good idea. <laughs> Whoever gonna use that? What the fuck? Uh, yeah. Dark bows. So we may have some range pures that are just debowing in the low category. Basilisk jewel, demonic tortured gorillas. So one in a hundred for a zenite. Gro mm -hmm. Grotesque guardians. Uh, the kraken, which is good. Uh, Abyssal Demons, Leaf Bladed Sword and Axe, Occult Necklace, Smoke Battle Staff, and all Superior Slayer creatures. So, mm. Imbued Hearts may be quite prominent in this one. Yeah, I think that's the same as last time as well. A lot of those yeah. were the same as last time, but they've added some new ones like Corp, Tob, um, Demonics, and all that sort of thing. Is there a way but to wield a volatile? The trade off is it's single plus, so it's going to be hell. <laughs> is there, is there a yeah. way to wield a volatile on the 1 to 35 combat world? Like, what do you need I don't for think that? So. You need, um, you need 50, 50 hit points. Yeah. 50, okay, all right. I was going to uh, say, the, you... yeah, the lowest possible is 49 combat, I'm pretty sure. Mm, okay. I was going to say something scary could happen, but never mind. Oh, <laughs> this, this sounds I good. mean, something like you could have a Dragon Warhammer account like in that bracket. Oh, so. my God. That would be. <laughs> or even I a, can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. I feel I, like not even I didn't as a kind see of creator, but, on there. But as someone who did, like, I kind of don't even want to stream this just to play it to myself, mm. right? It just and al so also, fun. in the 1 to 35 bracket, you could do Dwarf Cannon, right? Because, like, you always keep your quests, and then you could just, like, trade over a cannon to your account, quickly cannon up 60 range, which is going to take no time at all, Bro. and just go around Devo and everyone. There's going to be so many so. of those accounts, <laughs> man. Mm. Oh. You just don't find like, them while they're really training. Quite expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and they protect item, will. they keep their dark bow, right? So they'll just <laughs> yeah. have it again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And if you've got a cannon as well, you I guess you could get the prayer protect item and then just risk nothing and train an account it's be, Yeah, free. it's just going to be so different this time, like all things like this. Yeah. So something they have here, dead man only drop table. On top of those lovely increased drop rates, we'll also be implementing a dead man only drop table to all NPCs. Every single one. Means fucking goblins that you're killing in Lumbridge. Chickens. <laughs> this means you could snag some extra loot from anything you defeat. The drop table will include the powerful ancient warrior equipment. So we're talking VLS and, uh, yeah, basically anything along those lines. We don't have PvP armors, do we? But we no. No, no. 
but we got the weapons. Yep. Uh, sigils, explain further below, we'll get to that. Resource, resources such as food, potions, herbal supplies, and emblems. Want to secure the best possible chance of rolling on Dead Man Drop Table? The odds will depend according to the combat level of the NPC you're fighting. Additionally, bosses generally have an increased chance, and with superior Slayer creatures, it's guaranteed. And a note, the Ancient Warrior equipment can only be obtained by killing any NPC, but creatures within the wilderness have the highest chance of dropping them. Because I do remember people camping like Ankus and stuff like that in the Wildy. Uh, that seemed like quite a reliable spot, because they're a relatively decent level as well. Um, restricted content. If you're a veteran Deadman player, you'll recall the certain pieces of content we've previously were previously unavailable. These restrictions were typically put in place to protect players from experience or to prevent certain metas during the Deadman finale. This time, we're removing all previous restrictions aside from the following. The Doodle Arena, Castle Wars, Trouble Brewing, Fight Pits, Rat Pits, Pest Control, and Last Man Standing are all inaccessible. The Nature Rune... The nature rune chest in East Arty is inaccessible. Uh, count check will not be able to teleport players to the stronghold of security. Anything not listed above will be available, including within the finale. So make sure strategies. Make sure you. So make sure you strategize with this in mind. Yeah, so that's that's quite big. Like we said before, Zora being released now. Uh, we got lava dragons back if you want to get to lava dragons early on. All that sort of stuff is all it's all back on the menu, boys. <laughs> ring, of so right. ring, ring of suffering, all that sort of stuff. And the bit before that is actually huge. I haven't really paid attention to it. The uh, dead man only drop, drop table. You can now get a VLS from anything in the entire game. It used to be just wilderness only. Um, I hope it's I hope it's well balanced because a lot of monsters are killed in the, in the whole game. I hope yeah. it's not just like raining VLSs because no, I, know I, there are... I doubt that. I mean, also I know, the... but e e even even last time, like stuff like VLS and um, soil stuff, it, they weren't like the um, they weren't as rare as you think they were. Like it was a lot. You were trading those for like lesser pieces of gear, but because the less pieces of gear, a lot more rare. Like I think. I think they need to get a good hand, handle on the balancing of that if they're going to introduce them to the entire drop table globally. Yeah. Is there any restricted items? Like, I know last time there was, uh, you couldn't get the flail and you couldn't get the Yeah, bulwark. so they're, they're, they're uh, undoing all that. You can do all this stuff now. You can use a bulwark and flail or whatever you want. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, no. Bro, why would they do that, man? Yeah. I, well, I mean, it's just part of, like, strategy, isn't it? strategy it's a door it's a literal <laughs> door bro you're not gonna kill anyone with a bulwark oh People, my god you can be in the 1v1's bulwark switching fuck it let's go yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh that's, gonna be the, that's literally gonna be the meta yeah. dude they need to oh. not because imagine how much a bulwark would swap over for like those top tier clans that never want to die that is going to be the item that or the ellie right and Ellie's gonna be a little more rare i'd assume so how yeah. much is a like could we be seeing a bill swap for a bulwark no, not a bail. Not a work. Because no, the loot's honestly, are three times. No, but who's who, who's doing raids, right? A lot of people. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot. Because think about think, a raid, you're in an instance. What so do you think the weapon switches will be? With the bulwark, what do you think the weapon switches will be from it? Because it puts you on like a, I think it's a six tick cycle, so maybe like outer more god sword. No, you can um you can have it in attack mode, the bulwark, I think, right? And you still yeah. get like the massive range defense. You, you what, basically what's the attacks you, on that the ticks. You just you do your attack. You switch to bulwark. Then you do your you barrage. You switch to bulwark. Then you bolt. Then you switch to bulwark. You just every yeah. time you've done your action, you switch to bulwark for the defense. I can't Jesus. wait to read the chat while they're streaming this, and it's just gonna be. I'm gonna get like a bulwark emote on my Twitch. I'm yeah, have let's yeah. Oh, man, because it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a huge problem. Well, it might not be because the sigils like. That could completely mm -hmm. change everything. Who knows? It could. We'll see, man. I hope it's not a problem, but I'm going to assume it's going to be a problem until it's not. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. I'm, one Bill Bulwark swaps. I'm calling it, man. I'm calling it. They're going to be yeah. the hot item in this game. So <laughs> real, real quick, a few other changes they've done. Uh, all rune arrows and arrow shots restock much faster. Uh, fletching craft and supply stores will restock at a faster rate. Uh, pyramid tops found at the top of the agility pyramid will turn to cash upon death. 
I kind of like that. Die and Wiv or dropping a stack of Chinchompas will cause it to appear on the ground visible to all players. They should do that in the main game as well. If they can do that here, they should do that in the main game. Right, these, are, these, are all, these are all things which have already happened for the past yeah, month. These are yeah, all. And like some of them Damn. are in the main game as well. Okay. Changes remain in a play to prevent door spamming. Nice. All Zaya houses unlock are set to 100%. Um, the... I think that's like Archaeus Alliance. Mm -hmm. No. What what is that one? The architectural Architectural. <laughs> architectural. Like, like Holy architects. shit. <laughs> Mate, how the fuck do you know what that word means, man? Holy Me and shit. Lover. <laughs> this dude, this guy right here, like, bro, this guy could tell you everything about the night sky. He was tutored by the fucking genius himself. What's his name? Brian Cox? Brian is that the Cox. man? That was his yeah. fucking teacher, dude. That's why Solo Mission is so know, smart. Dude. God damn it. So that yeah. many quests yeah. is also completed, meaning favor is locked. Uh, Tura will not assign cow fight tasks. A pog. POH pools are unavailable for three minutes after combat to stop uh, like spec tabbing. I think that's good. Yeah, that's going to be a big problem. If not, yeah. so good. Teleblock, teleblock will now last for 150 seconds. That's like two and a half minutes. Uh, or for yep. 75 seconds would protect from mage. Okay. It, that's going to be only useful in like those crazy areas where you know you can get an escape if you go up and down something, but honestly, like barrage with the single plus, you shouldn't even need teleblock. I don't I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, You'd have to have maybe a really it's specific powerful. reason. It's it, for is, it, is, it is quite powerful, yeah, for teaming. Yeah. Single okay. plus though? I mean, I guess if you swap off, there's a way to do it, but yeah. Well, you have to try and get a log out instead of a tele all of a sudden. Yeah, is, it, yeah, it makes it a lot more for. difficult. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and a safety deposit box can now be found in both banks in the Grand Tree. Blah, 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 blah. So probably one of the most sort of like vague things we've been told and we know nothing about, and we won't know much more than this until the actual game mode comes out. They're introducing sigils, which to me seems like kind of a... Sp kind of taking some inspiration from Twisted Leagues with the relics. Um, so I'll just read what it says here. Let's talk about sigils, the biggest change to demo mode. Reborn by far. Much like the relics from League, sigils are additional layer of powerful buffs that will enhance your gameplay beyond anything that mere equipment or skill levels can provide. Unlike relics, however, sigils are not permanent choice. You'll have the flexibility to swap out and change your sigils to complement whatever task you're working on. So as long as you're in a safe zone and not scald, simply attune to your chosen sigil, causing it to become untradeable, and you'll benefit from its unique properties. When you're ready to swap sigils and untune from the sigil, untune, sorry, unattune from the sigil, and it will become tradable once more. There are three tiers, each providing more powerful buffs than last. The higher tier of sigils will only be available on high combat level worlds. So it says here, uh, this is an image of the sigil interface with a sneak peek on some of the benefits. So we got slot one, the stamina sigil, sigil tier one, and it says you're permanently under the effect of the stamina potion, which Thank like God. that would be very good for questing. One hundred percent. Slot two sigil of formidable fighter tier one again. Your melee accuracy is increased by ten plus ten in stab slash and crush, and then slot three. This is a tier two sigil, and it says. S sigil sigil of the elves <laughs> you gain 50 percent more experience in the following skills agility and then i imagine a bunch of others yeah. so this is like They're the teasing us. One. Yeah. they are teasing I'm us bro i'm hoping we start with that stamina one right away i'd assume we would but you get to choose, choose. you get to choose yeah. okay because i thought it like you you got to kill monsters for them too right like yeah higher level ones okay so you get to get your first one and then the other ones are unlocked through pvm Dude, yeah, I already thought of a method. Oh, you can buy them on the G as well. Mm -hmm. Le legit, log in, pick the stamina one, go do loads of quests, like reset your account, die three times, and then pick a different tier two. Done. There you go. Um, higher exposure like, me, Mike. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that, bro. Bro, that's such a good meta. That is, that's a, that's a big brain idea. Did you just think of that on the spot, or have you read this? No, well, I've seen the blog, but I literally just thought about it, and I was like, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, it, is good, it is a good idea to be a suicider at the start, to be honest. Yeah. I'm gonna keep but it. The thing is, like, like quest items are a bit like A's to get, but yeah. The, the title will be I lost my third life on purpose, right? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the white. <laughs> it says so when logging into demo mode reborn or god i hate just say dead my mode don't put reborn every time for the first time or after losing your last life you'll be presented with a selection of tier two t- tier two sigils while the sigils on offer are, s- are the same each time you'll be able to pick one to kick start your journey into the wild increasing your overall power level and offering a little variety each time you start over so they're basically, like, they're saying it right here. Every time you start over, they're expecting a lot of people to die three times off the bat. Like, you're, yep. you're going to have to go into this with, like, the strongest willpower and, like, rebuild mindset. If you don't have it and you think that you're just not going to die the entire time, this may not be for you. Additional sigils can be obtained as drops from NPCs. They can also be brought from or sold to other players, although you'll only be able to do this at the Grand Exchange. It will be possible to have up to three sigils active at any one time, but only two are can be combat related. Upon losing a life that is not your last, any unattuned sigils will remain safe and in your possession, but an unattuned sigil in your inventory will be deleted. Losing your final life means all sigils, attuned or not, will be lost forever. Nice. So I think the interesting thing there is that you can only get them from doing PVM and you can only trade them on the Grand Exchange, which is an interesting mechanic because to me that just sounds like Clans won't necessarily just be able to have the high-end sigils and have them, you know, freely traded among themselves. Like, they will have to take the risk of putting a really... If they're really strong, which it sounds like they will be, a really powerful sigil into the Grand Exchange for a silly amount of money and just hope that nobody has an offer in that high. So I think that's uh, I think that's a cool little mechanic uh-huh. they've added in there. I'm a little like, how strong are these endgame sigils going to be? Like, are you going to get like more special attack or 50% accuracy? Mm, I think, I think, I think gonna it's some of them going to be pretty, pretty close. Right. Yeah. But should we should we all just guess one? Like, just take a guess. I'll, uh, I reckon, I'm thinking special attack. Yeah, I reckon one of them will be like increased freezes, so like double freezes or something like 40 second barrages. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> second bar- maybe mage yeah. accuracy, maybe. Well, dude, that, yeah. that tier one, it's probably going to be for all styles. So maybe tier three is literally like plus 50% accuracy in all styles. So you go into the 1v1s yeah. and you're hitting every single time. All, That'd if be I, crazy. If, all I will add to this is I really do hope that Jagex, and this sounds great, but I really do Jagex, I hope that Jagex have taken into consideration the integrity and skill level that it takes to be a winner for dead man mode because as we did see in the uh, twisted leagues it's like there were sigils where you could attack it twice the speed and so forth and i feel like they could easily lose the integrity of the game mode if they make them too powerful to the oh. point where it's no longer a case of you're relying on skill you're relying on sigils and i think that would be a shame if that were to happen. If there's a double attack speed one, I'm staying <laughs> in the first world. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, like, if you have double attack speed, it's actually more skill. Like, I'm not joking. When I, I PK'd on Trailblazer, and there weren't many proper fights, but when I fought Ditterbitter in the... in uh, It was Solo Missions tournament. Um, oh. <laughs> it, it was so much fun, because I kept on catching him off prayer and stuff, because everything was sped up. So I was, I feel like I was playing it better than him because I knew like, oh, I'm, I can now hit him every two ticks rather than four. Whereas his brain was thinking he's going to hit me every four ticks, you know? So it, it definitely changes the meta and it might be too broken, but I personally really liked it because it, it made me feel like all the knowledge I have in PVP, I could actually use it. Okay. Yeah, if there's only fantastic. a couple people that have that sigil, it's going to be bad. Like if everyone has it, sure. But if there's only like... One or two people, well, they're the winners. They oh, win. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you, can, you can say that about an Ellie, though. You right. know what I mean? Like, I the last ones I was for Ellie's. Double Max. attack speed over an Ellie. Anyway. You might be saying that now, Max, but wait until you're in the final fight and you're against a guy that has double attack speed using, like, fucking full bloody just a car with a blowpipe and he's just like bang 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 like <laughs> free your but every time <laughs> it's all right dude i'll have the uh nine times uh spec relic and i can spec him out with a d sim then like nine yeah. gmos dead <laughs> but that's oh. what makes it interesting right like all these things that no one knows what is the best thing and that yeah. makes the final so much what so much more watchable and like to play it is like it's so nice not knowing the meta like i would i would hate it if it was just like really similar and it was like a month long of like 
preparation, lackadaisical, and then clans fed some people, and then it's just a 1v1 tournament. I don't want... I don't think Deadman should be just a 1v1 tournament. Like, I know they've changed, like, the, the bracket at the end to beat that, but the relics really add, like, an extra level of spice, which is mm -hmm. good. Oh, I yeah. love the spice, but can you imagine there's only one spec relic? It gives you, like, ten specs, just like Mank said, but the guy just whips out... The, no one knows it, but he just whips out the Gmall every 1v1, so it just starts to go... Trick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another, that's another thing. I, I'm assuming you can't tell what your opponent has in terms of relics. So, say if you, I could have like ultra mage defense and like be really weak to melee or something, and Mank could be there trying to mage me, and I'm just like laughing because he doesn't know, bro. <laughs> I've got like Sounds about right, dude. Some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I've got. By the way, like, I it's think so a, relic, a relic. I think there may be because I didn't ship in. Maybe one that adds extra to the food you eat. It's like if you sip a yeah, brew instead be. of it being 15, it could be like 18 or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, it gets you to full HP. I don't, hopefully not that OP, you know? I think, but, I think, I think they understand it, right? I think it's like Husky and the people that did the League's Relics, and they were relatively well balanced, I'd say, like across the different tiers in, in yeah. those. So I trust them not to like fuck it up completely but at the same time they've got to take that risk haven't they like to yeah. make it interesting we had husky on the podcast and i was like are there going to be relics in league and i swear he hinted at it and i'm like okay so i'm assuming that is so i'm not really super yeah. surprised but i'm also I'm, I'm glad we get stamina like that's always ass i'm so glad every non-permanent game to choose mode, that one <laughs> i'm gonna choose it i'm definitely <laughs> gonna choose it there's no i'll way. add on to what solo said a minute ago about the um about the multi at the ends so I personally, in my opinion, I really didn't like the Morty at the end because it just seemed so impossible to get into the finals. It was like, I, I couldn't fully commit to it because it's like, if I wanted to get end game gear, you had to swap and so forth. So I know it's a big change. And I remember speaking to, I think it might have been like Mod Sween at one of the Deadman modes where I was like, have you guys considered just doing, you know, instead of having this the last 250 people after the multi phase go into the single fights. I was like, have you thought about maybe just doing that from the beginning? And the reply was something along the lines of like, they couldn't do it because it would just be way too many fights spread out. So obviously they figured out a way around that. But I think it'd be really nice as a change to see how people react to it. It's like, so for myself personally, it's like, this is going to be the first deb I mode that I really try my ass off on. Because in the past, I couldn't be bothered to join a clan, and I still, I can't be asked, because the whole process of that's just, it's a long and tedious one, whereas now, I don't need to do that, and nobody does. And, I mean, if you are just a decent player at the game, you can hybrid. Uh, you don't even have to worry about being in an alliance with anybody. Like, you could have a shot at winning the 30,000s, which they've upped it, which is really nice to see. Yes. Um, and you're not going to have to worry about all of that third party, you know, who do you DM, who do you speak to, how, how do you end up getting into the Discord and so forth. And even if it does turn out to not be as good, I'm just glad that they're trying something different, to be completely honest. I think change is effectively the biggest thing that Deadman Mode was lacking. Mm -hmm. I agree. No, I agree that it's needed for a, cha for a change. Uh Maybe we should read what's actually going on with the final bit. Yeah, down. so if you just scroll okay. down a little bit, we can go into the 1v1s because this is, like, huge. Also, the prize pool is bigger. I mean, from 1,000 to 32,000, oh. quite a jump. Quite a jump. Yeah, Maybe one day we'll see too. 100k. Hey, look at Mag. That perked him up, man. <laughs> Florida. What are you, you going to buy this year? Because remember, one of the last ones you won, you bought like a treadmill or something like that. Yeah, no, last time I bought a new PC because I needed one. I've still got the old one and it's literally just died, but it was awful. Uh, I bought a rowing machine as well and a new phone. So those were like the three things I bought. <laughs> and then for this one, I'd probably just keep it in savings for like a house, you know? Nice. There we go. And you I, you I, deserve I, a house, honestly. With, with eSports RuneScape, you good. I, I know that Max probably too humble to admit this, but um, even when he won multiple Deadman modes and the prize pool was like 10 or 20k, like, Max, you didn't even keep half or a close to because you split all of your teammates. So it wasn't a case that this man down here has just been living off the finale winnings or anything like that. Um, which actually leads me to a question. You could potentially walk away with $30,000 here uh, if you choose not to ally or rely on a clan. Is that something that's gone through your head for this? 
I think it's 20k for first still. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think but, you're right. Sorry, yeah, you are right. It's 20k for first. Um, honestly, I haven't really thought about it yet. Um, I still need to talk to my team and see what everyone's doing because at the end of the day, like whenever we played dead mode and um, I would get fed, it was everyone got an equal split. Even if you were just the guy who the entire tournament you were just fishing sharks on like three different accounts, even if you did that the entire tournament, you'd literally get the same split as me as long as you were putting in like good hours. So the clan's always been about like the team winning as opposed to like individuals winning. So. I don't know. I, I need to talk to them and see kind of what the plan is with, with winnings and whether everyone's going in solo or, or what, you know? That's Trust great him. to see because I, I heard other clans that have won the person who got the prize just, oh, where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen him in Discord lately? Oh, you just mm. won the tournament, right? So that's happened a couple times. So make sure if you are going for cash prize uh, community, just make sure you're aligned with the right clan because a lot of them may not they might just disappear. It's happened before. Yeah. Basically, the general rule is if you join a demo mode clan and it's a CC, you ain't getting a split. <laughs> if you're joining a clan where you're in team speak and, you know, maybe you're in a WhatsApp group, you're probably going to stand a pretty good chance of seeing some of that money. But anyways, yeah. so the finale and qualification. So here's how you secure your spot. The dead man mode will last for one month. So it's a long boy. Uh, there will be no separate tournament event. Your account used in the Deadman modes. Uh, sorry, your account used within the Deadman. Uh, seasons will be there. Uh, the same amount used in the Deadman. The fuck am I saying, bro? I'm going to just start over. <laughs> Wait, bro, we need my skill to read. <laughs> it's because they keep putting Deadman Reborn. It's like, we get it. You're doing it again, but you don't have to write like, it 50 I times, swear, bro. I think we got the same dyslexia because I was reading it the same way you were. You were reading I was like, what? Yeah, I'm like trying skill. to make... It's Thank not you. making sense, man. Right, I'll start again. Uh, so there will be no separate tournament event. Your account used within Deadman Reborn Season will be the same account used in the Deadman Reborn Finale. Jesus! Okay, so that's a good change, because people have been asking that for ages. Uh, I, I don't think they say whether or not you go through with the same stats. Or yeah, it's just that, like it's, it, it is that. It's the same as how it was last time. Like It is just rolling straight into the final at the end of the month, which is like the oh. optimal way, really, in my opinion. Wait, wait, so you're only going to have to train up once, just to clarify. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was so. like, it last, last time it was like that as well. Oh, that's sick. Uh, we've removed the multi-way combat final hour entirely. Instead, the top 2,048 ranked players will be entered into 1v1s. Uh, this will be based on total level slash high score ranking. Uh, quick question, 2,048. So, are they going to make, like, a world that allows that continue reading continue Keep reading. reading yeah okay okay <laughs> uh these 2048 players will have access to four worlds thank you uh each restricted to a maximum of 512 players okay uh these worlds will be split across various regions it's likely there will be an na west na east and two eu worlds i feel bad for the australians man they always get dicked on this each world will operate on a first-come, first-served basis. Once a world has a total of 512 players, it will not be possible for additional players to join. Oh my. You're going to have to be on early if you want to get your ping, boys. Uh, these players will bow out in a 1v1 setting until a total of 1,024 players remain. The remaining 1,024 players will enter the battle. Uh, battle out in a second round of 1v1s until a total of 512 players remain. The remaining 512 players will be granted access to the final 1v1 worlds. It's going to be a long Damn. tournament. Yep. Damn. Well, you didn't have any That's multi, so it won't be too bad. But that's good though, because the longer you stream on Twitch to more viewers, it would be really good for um for for the promotion of RuneScape, especially those early fights. I'm I'm more yeah. looking forward to those really early fights where these noobs are just battling it out than the than the last ones. Yeah, I mean, I'd almost I always wouldn't mind if they slowed it down a little bit so they could focus on key fights a little bit more. Because a lot of the time when you read the street, you're watching the stream, and the chat's like, where's Tall Vesta? Where's Mika? Where's Mank? All these people. And like, you just don't time. get to see them die at any point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're going to be like, an eSport. Or even highlights or something. Point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just, hopefully, hopefully they do do that. And I will say, um, like, from a commentator slash, like, eSports scene of watching the Deadman Mode finale, 
I, I do think, I know we spoke about earlier about Morty being fun, or at least Solo Mission seems to think so. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> from a commentator standpoint, how do you commentate that clusterfuck? Okay, right, which right. Which is Everyone's the Morty dying. area. It's like, when I, you got I a agree. solo I fight, agree. it's so much nicer to be like, okay, he's got this gear, he's going in for this, is he going to fakey that, does he have this uh, sigil, and, and so forth. Whereas, like, the Morty area is just like, yep, we got fucking so many people on the screen half of them are invisible and there's fucking chinchompas flying from people that aren't even stood there it's like i i feel like from that perspective as well i think this will look nicer and hopefully they just do a good job of being able to like find those people that are in really high-end gear slash really good pkers and be able to like keep an eye on those fights yeah, I agree. But what, what I to, just to defend myself, like I, 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 I understand that it looks te- most looks terrible. Like it's fun to play, yes. But what I would suggest is like don't completely scrap it because loads of people love it, love it and enjoy it. Why not make it so like you go into a losers bracket if you die in multi? So like any single player can still progress to to the end and win, even if they die first person of the whole tournament. And why I not have fair. it so there's so there was like interesting things in the multi stage. So say an idea I had was to, you know, they drop those chests, make them actually good. Why not drop an Elijah in one of them or something like that? And then so teams would actually fight over that or even have like 10 minutes in, like if you have like the most clan chat members in this certain area, that means you all get a legs upgrade or something like that, like Wilderness Wars. So there's like actual point to fighting in multi or even you could have like a chest which has an, an amulet that has insane stats and you can't get it unless it's from one of those chests. So teams would fight over that to give them that to their top guy. And then maybe even f- to, for the stream content, you could, anyone wearing the amulet, they have a black skull above their head. So they're a target now. They've got a target on their back. I like you could that. follow around where the amulet's going, which players have got it. Are you going to give that to Manked? Well, he's got a black skull now. He's going to get absolutely fucked up by everybody. Like... I think you can make multi the multi stage a lot more exciting. So like for me it's a little bit disappointing that it's completely removed, but I hundred percent understand it. If it's like the old system or insta one v ones, I think insta one v ones is better for the health of the overall game. But I think they could have been a bit more creative, but they're already doing so much stuff. So yeah. yeah. That's, no, that's, 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 what, that's a fair that's point. That's to, to defend my point of like thinking Molly has a place. That's hey, more listen, what I was talking it's, about. It's all opinion based anyways. <laughs> I personally don't like it, you do. Some people have long necks, some people have short necks. It is what it is. You know, <laughs> what can you do? Hey, the loser bracket's a brilliant idea, though. Like, if they just added that, yeah. that would be perfect. Because people still have a good chance to 1v1, man. And uh, talking about zooming in on those good fights, I know you guys want to watch those good PKers. I want to watch the really bad ones. Um, I hope they really <laughs> zoom in on those ass fights where they don't know F keys or prayer swaps and they're just talking trash. Because that's... That's what I want to watch, honestly. I think this time they'll go on the interesting relic combinations and that will add a lot more to the viewer experience because you'll be back in like, oh, I'm in Mage Gang or whatever. Like, mm. whoever's got mm. certain relics. So I think it will be a lot more interesting to watch this time than just a 1v1 tournament. Yeah. Mm. No, I agree. I, I think it looks good. I, I think they've changed so much. And on top of that, they've also pretty much left the entire world unlocked like the fact you can kill you know you can kill zora you can go and kill you can do both of the rage you can do the nightmare it's like there are so many possibilities here i think personally this seems really good simply based upon the fact it feels like they're going back to the start it's like when demo mode first came out the very first season it was kind of just like here's this really brutal thing that you guys are gonna have to figure out and it, it feels a lot like that it feels like we're starting over from scratch and uh you know it's like this doesn't have to be perfect and chances are it will not be perfect there will be many things that are wrong with this but as long as they actually fix remove and work upon that for the one after this like I, I just think this is this is a good direction. I, I personally mm. like this. I really do. I agree. I really like the meta changes overall, but I just think it's a little bit too brutal with the the wiping mechanic and singles plus at the same time. I just think that's a bit too savage. I, I can't wait. I want to see the destruction. <laughs> I see a burn. I yeah. want to see it active for the whole month, though. Yeah, it's true. never gonna happen, dude. Active the whole month will never. Happen, I mean, the original bro. dead. But I want like this has original dead man mode vibes to me, but I just don't want. Oh, I just well, don't want everyone to quit after like wiping. But I'm one, uh, well, three times. Mm-hmm. 
originally it was it was just a completely new world though right like everyone was into it. it's like oh my god you can kill someone and whatever and you can gain xp faster non-permanent game mode it, it's 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 different i i just don't yeah, think i know I, I know i know it is different mm -hmm. yeah so I, I don't recall seeing anything on this blog post regarding uh muling being able to trade your stuff over yeah, to your it, friends no, it is it says it's bannable if you control f muling it says yeah but so, what, what uh, happens... they didn't. They, one, one thing I will say: they didn't mention swapping. But swapping and mewling go hand in hand. Like if I want to swap all my GP to O seven, if, if that's allowed, then that is technically a mule because I've just put all right. my wealth on O seven. I die, and then oh, I'll swap it all back again. That is mewling. Like it's so stupid. You either have mewling and swapping allowed, or you have them both disallowed. Like there's no other. It is. Weird. There's no so one and one. One and one doesn't a... work. I have a scenario, and you guys are going to have to tell me if this is considered muling. If I play two different accounts for this tournament, I have, <laughs> say, like a barrow hunter that just goes and collects barrow pieces and kills people with barrows, then I have my main account. Am I able to swap, trade those items to my main, or is that considered muling? You it's so blurred lines. Like. Well, no, I think the way they define it is if you have two accounts and one of them literally sits in the safe zone 24-7 and it's not playing like a real account, it's a mule. If it's going uh, out and doing barrows, then, well, you're, you're technically risking stuff and you're playing it normally, so I think it's fine. But again, it's mm. like, it is pretty vague, so they can kind of just be like, deleted for, for, for anything, <laughs> you know? It, it's one thing that's yeah, always been really scary for the mode. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that makes sense. Like, you know, if you just have an account that never leaves the safe zone and you got all your wealth on there, that's a clear case of muling, right? I get that. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds really cool. There's actually, it covers it. If you just scroll a little bit down, they go over some rules that apply in this dead man mode. Um, yeah, right, right there. It says the act of muling during the season is prohibited and is bannable. Also, during the 1v1 stage, should a player experience connective connectivity issues and log out before a fight begins that player is only until the fight begins to log back so ddos mm, scary uh 1v1 stage should credible evidence emerge to suggest that an account is maliciously targeting other players they're going to take them out so that's nice um we will not at any point or any circumstance restart the finale and then the last one, we will endeavor to announce the results of the finale on the night of the event. But should more investigations be required, the results should be announced, but only after the old school team has met and reviewed all evidence. Isn't it crazy that this game, a point and click, has such controversy behind a tournament that they would have to like convene and go, you think this shit's legit? <laughs> you yeah. think that person actually won? Like, it's, it's because it's of the insane. money. It's all to yeah. do with real world money, isn't it? It's like mm -hmm. if gold genuinely had no currency in like the real world market, there probably would be like hardly any of this stuff. But like the trouble is when you're talking about money, you know, 20 grand for first place, like that's a lot of money, dude. People are willing to do some real shady things for that kind of money. So it's, shady things happen. It's well, people, will cheat. people will cheat if there's no cash prize as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. People have egos, but also, um, like swapping is kind of like legal RWT because if you swap, like, let's say two bill for an Ellie, um, I mean, you're, you're doing it to get a better chance at winning money, right? So it's kind of that, that's always kind of dodgy to me, but it is what it is. It is the weirdest tournament a game has ever hosted, honestly. It is the weirdest yeah. esports. It, it really is. It has a little bit of everything. There's a lot of gray areas, a lot of black market stuff going on, and apparently DDoSing is not out of the question, and they need to keep their eyes on it. So <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. I, I, I almost think there's too much of this for it to ever become an esports. Like, there's too much gray and, and shady things. To become. I would love to see it become an esport, but it's... Just, I mean, you don't see this yeah. in leagues, the whole, League of the whole eSport conversation is a completely different conversation. Like, yeah. I think this is just like, yeah, it's you should see Dead Man as a four fun thing, and there's just yeah. a little competition at the end. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think well, this I is huge like... for the game. Like, no matter what we say, like the, these small things at the end of the day, are, I wouldn't say are too significant. The, the whole game mode as a whole, it's going in such a good direction, and we literally had like 15 seasons of pretty much the same content. So the fact they're doing this much with it now gives me good hope for the future as oh, well. 
Yeah, definitely. I love it, but I just gotta say, like, if the winner wins first place, I feel like it's more effort than esports. You know what I mean? So I feel like it it should be on the same playing field. Like the person should get the same fame or sponsorships or or opportunities because if you win this, I mean, it's harder than winning an actual esports tournament, in my opinion. Like, there's so much that goes into this, so much planning, possibly luck. Uh, the one v ones, the 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 gear, other people locking down areas. I mean, the str- the strategy in general, right? Just including the relics, it, it's skillful. It really is. So I'd like to see it become an esport. I feel like it's even more skillful than an esport. But yeah, well, definitely just for fun. It's way though. too much RNG and RuneScape. Like, yeah, you yeah, could, you no could run the you could run the same one v one bracket ten times, ten different people would win. But you, ag- yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Dude, I kind of felt the same as well. Like for a really long time about this becoming an esport, and I, I think there's some very specific differences between like League of Legends esports and RuneScape esports and it's actually sick if you're a RuneScape player it's like you can effectively join this tournament for free you don't even have to prove to anybody that you're a beast or you're a professional and it's like you could potentially end up winning whereas like when you look at League of Legends it's you know it's like there are teams of people that have had to work their way to get that spot and then they keep that spot by performing well and you know it's like the league like the League of Legends esports like you know they have qualifications and they have people come through whereas this is like as raw as it gets because anybody can do this there, like anybody that's listening to this right now could enter this tournament and win that kind of money and be crowned, you know, the winner of all of Dead Man Mode. So I, I feel like esports, it probably never will be an esport Dead Man Mode itself, simply for the fact that it's it's almost a bit wild to the point where it's so hard to be able to like really control it because you're right there's outside factors people ddos people are gonna bolt people are gonna rwt people are gonna break all the rules they can get away with and there's very little moderation to that there's nothing to stop them doing that and there's no consequence for them to do that aside from being dq'd but guess what it's like if they cheat and they win and they get the money you know is it worth it who knows but i feel like dead man mode it shouldn't even be called an esport it's like a completely different kind of esport. This there needs to be there's no name for what Dead Man Mode is because it's not just a tournament and it definitely isn't an esport because it's just not done in the same way. It's not harnessed, it's not controlled in that sort of like fine line. It it's something. It, I I don't know what a good word for this is to describe it, but well like, maybe Sorry, keep going. I I was also going to add I, I also thought the same thing, and then I, I remember speaking to Mod Matt K uh, at one of the Denmark modes in regards to numbers, and you know he told me like the numbers are insane, like even just the Twitch numbers. Uh, there's also the fact that the last podcast, or sorry, two podcasts ago when we had Mod Matt K on, he told us like some of these Denmark mode events brought in over a million dollars in revenue. From fucking like membership mm. signups, like that's nuts. That's in that's a lot of money just from no. membership signups. Like that's insane. Imagine if they charge players like a bond to enter to get into debt. Like there's just so much going there in terms of numbers, and not to mention the fact that if you were to look right now as like you know the top five biggest MMOs that exist, it RuneScape's up there. Like, I, I think it's within, like, the top five. And also the fact that it's been out for such a long time, it's stood the um, the test of time, and it's mm-hmm. still doing so well. Like, I don't think that's something that should be undermined or something that should be looked down upon because it's actually kind of insane that a game that is so old is still doing so well. And whether you like what Jagex do and you like the game or not, it's like the numbers are there. Like the proof is in the pudding. It literally is right there. It's nuts. Um, yeah. I was just going to say like the esports, right? You were just talking about million dollars in revenue. Like why do games actually have esports, right? They increase their player base, increase their revenue. Um, but also you brought up another good point. Anyone could join this tournament and win the cash prize so maybe this is an esport but it could possibly be be become one right if these top tier clans would join maybe like five person clan you have like 10 different teams and then it would be the same thing but just with a smaller bracket of people 
I I feel like that could actually become an esport, right? Well, I oh, feel like th- that would pretty much be like All Stars, and that would be a really easy way to be able to. Mm-hmm. Con- when I say control, I just mean being able to harness it and just stop the cheating and dirty stuff happening. But yeah. like when it when it's so open, you know, so easily accessible, an open world like this, like that's not impossible. Like I don't think they're ever gonna fully get that down because yeah, now with this mode. Ha- here's the thing: mode, how, how do you prove that somebody? has ddos somebody how, how do you actually prove how do you get the evidence that it was that player which is called solo mission ddos manked up me like who, the- who, how do you prove it it's like someone might just not like manked and be like yeah i'm taking him out do you know what i mean it's so difficult no. to prove these well things. these right. tournaments actually happen at the gaming area right league has all you know they're not going to have these people playing from their desktop homes right so say you get five different teams you invite them over you fly them in and if they're making millions of of dollars in revenue they have the accessibility to do this so it's just would they want to um i feel like it would catch a lot of eyes it would put uh the definition of being in a clan on runescape on a on a higher pedestal than what it is now right Mm -hmm. because i i obviously i'm not big into clans but i do respect the amount of preservation and planning a lot of these guys do for dead man mode and i feel that if they were given the opportunity to excel and actually become an esport and get sponsored and have gaming houses and stuff it it could be a thing right in this in but you'd have to have teams you just couldn't have everyone join right yeah it's like i think esports with runescape in general it's better to have people that you can root for and i think that's why all stars was such a good event because you have boaty you have Torvesta, you have people that you know in the community that you can say like i want them to win whereas when when it's clans you don't know like they're really good pk that's called like jenny 87 or something you know so unless you have people to root for it, it's I, difficult. I i say that the counter argument to that is i don't want to be offensive to you Mark, but no one really knew who you were before like you did well on deadmans and stuff yeah, I, I knew who he, mate, I used to watch his DHPK videos back I, like, in like, I, 2000, I, honestly, I, knew, I, like, I knew who he was, but, like, the average person, like, people would say, oh, but if you give all these people an opportunity, they'll become known and stuff. But yeah. I, yeah, I, no, I, but... I, I, I agree that you need, you need like, so no. you need you just, like, brand it in the right way. Yeah, so when I say that, I, I don't mean, like, only invite content creators. I mean, like, when you, when you know people are at a decent level, invite them. So if mm. someone's like proved themselves, if you have like a content creator Discord and you say to them, "Yo, who are some really good PKs?" and you have a lot of people that are like trustworthy that can say like X, Y, Z. Here's like a list of like fifty people, and then you get them into a th- into a tournament, and then you can just keep on like playing those people, adding like new people who are who are trusted good people who don't who you know won't AHK or anything. Then you can build like a infrastructure of oh. This guy is really good. I want to root for him, you know? I'm not just saying, like, I only ever invite the same 20 content creators or, or whatever. No, I agree. I, I, my, my, my opinion on, like, the whole esports stuff is you'll never get any sort of respectable esport with the amount of RNG which is involved in RuneScape. You have to broaden it out to something more similar to, say, EV Skates Battle Royale, for example. That is more what an esport in RuneScape should look like. Not that the ending is terrible in that, but, like, that sort of thing where it's like it's not just RNG. Like you have like you spawn in a map and like you have like a certain amount of time to gather your gear and stuff. And then there's also the PvP element that's killing this PVM. That would be an actual esport. Like and I know there is competition in RuneScape with two people having a 1v1 NH battle, but that is RNG at the end of the day. And as long as it's largely dictated by RNG at the top level, it'll never be taken seriously. As How about an e-sport. what about if they remove the RNG element? And just, just hear me out. What, what, what if they made it? So, you know, obviously, if you're praying melee against a Hellhounds, you're hit zero. What if they were to specifically have a tournament, which was RNG is off the table. You will only take damage when you pray incorrectly. There's still a massive amount of RNG involved in that. What? So, okay. So, for example, say if Mank just standing over there, I'm standing over here. We're like in a ranged mage battle. Like just because I hit Mank off prayer 100% of the time, doesn't mean that I've actually played better in that sense because uh, I think if you go really deep into it, it's like okay, so say if you like you played rock paper scissors against somebody, there's oh, like yeah. well, that is hundred percent right? RNG, but one person can still come out on top and be like, oh, they deserve to win because look at the tracker, they pray, they did the things right better. Like 
that's the same at the very highest level. That is exactly the same as RuneScape. It's rock, paper, scissors when you're in like a ranged mage fight with somebody. I'll, I know that a lot of people don't really understand that, but I'm sure Manked, you probably do understand that. But that is tr that is true. I, I think I've got a good point. I think it ties maybe both of yours in. Um, I think Rakesy's thing of if you pray the right thing, they hit a zero. But then if you hit them off prayer, you hit your max hit. Would that not be good? Because if yeah, if you're doing all, if, if, well, if, like... it, it eliminates it eliminates the RNG, but the RNG still massively exists. Like because oh. of the um, th there's a limited decision making that goes into. What oh, you're okay, yeah. and what I, you're I don't really. You're gonna have to explain that a bit more because the way I I, I see yeah, it, that's, right, yeah. it, if you're fighting somebody and you got free combats, you got melee, you got range, you got mage. You take out taking damage if you're praying correctly, and like Mag just say, if they're not praying correctly, you hit your max hit. It's like to me that's not RNG. That's being able to read and predict your opponent, right? So I don't really understand how that could be summed up to RNG if it came down to that. Like you just have okay, to be uh, good at reading the opponent. No, but there's but what I'm saying is there's like there's no such thing as reading the opponent at the top level. There's no such thing as manked reading somebody who's do if you're in ra it's range or mage, they have one they have they have two choices. One oh, I guess bro. the point where there is We're getting into really like thing. quantum physics and shit in a minute, bro. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just say this. I, I agree with Solar Mission and I think uh, esports in RuneScape should always be like more of a fun element, but there there is a there is an element. I think when you get to the top 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 level of PKing, yeah, it's RNG. Like everyone can one tick everything, but I think like All Stars, for example, I did I I got good RNG, but I feel like I was I was in a position where I could outplay people because I could read them, and that's yeah, why that's I didn't lose the fight. Because you were you were PKing it's like noobs the whole time. Like, no yeah, I know. And, and, and that's why it's not like top, top, top level. But but yeah. I think like until you get to there, like, obviously, obviously there is a differential between the top, top people. But like it's so slim that RNG will always be the major factor yeah, in these fair. tournaments. It, it I, I is. Think, so it so, is so, like, so yeah. it's almost a waste of time exercise. It's a 50-50 yeah, totally. on whether you're going to get hit. I, I understand yeah. it from that sense and it being somewhat RNG-like, yeah. And also, on top of that, I don't know if it would be the most interesting thing to watch. So, you know, that that is a fair point you made, yeah. It's also yeah, sorry for... Um, I was going to say, sorry for laughing yeah. real loud. Just solo, an solo those little rock, paper, scissor animation got me off guard. Just my yeah. no, I, I, I don't think I explained it very well. Like, That's in all this no, I think is, rock, I, paper, scissors, Ben. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I think I got what you mean. Like At first I didn't, but basically what you mean is in RuneScape, it's all so limited that there's not that many ways to outplay people, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. What you mean? At, at the very highest level, there is a very... There is yeah. hardly any way to get, gather an advantage, so the RNG like just mm -hmm. takes over, and it's not even RNG in terms of like, like someone on the tracker, right? The PVP tracker thing. They can have seventy percent prayers right, and someone else can have fifty percent. That could just be. That's not because the the guy who like get got them off prayer seventy percent of the time. That's not necessarily because they they played better. It yeah. can just be RNG of the decisions made in that fight because. It's I, I'm standing here, right? And someone's like someone's here with like their staff on and like their like hides on. They have like they could bolt me or they could mage me. And like, I have no way to know what they're gonna do at the high I'm talking about the highest level. So like they, they could so they could bolt me and I'm praying mage. Okay, that, that that's a that's a one-o for them. On and now I'm gonna pray mage again because like I'm just like flipping between whatever I'm praying. It doesn't matter what I'm praying. Like for me for me to like uh, I, I can't. I can't. I can't explain I it. Like, it. I can. I can. I've got it. I've got you. I've got you. Consistency. That's the word we're looking for. Because because there's not b uh, enough uh, skill gap at the very top. Like everyone's so good, nobody can consistently beat other people at the top level. Because there's not a way to do it. Like you, one fight you may get seventy percent prayers correctly. Another fight you might get thirty percent. It's not because you outplayed them. It was just because you know. Like yeah, it's it, difficult to do that because of the lack I, of variety today. I when I explain top level birding, because people are always like, "Oh, I bet to a vested beat some of them," and it was like, "Yo, if you give them ten battles, they're gonna lose one or two or three, or someone's gonna win more, right?" Because RNG, and not only RNG, but if you get the RNG correct and then you got rhythm on your opponent well it's pretty much over at that top level some of these top people can just continue it doesn't matter how how good you are if the guy's constantly hitting and predicting your prayer switches with the rhythm it's over right but that could happen on either side at 
at that top tier of, of a level. So I understand what you're saying 100%. Yeah. It's, but the only way to eliminate, eliminate it is have 1,000 fights each, which doesn't... Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, Even that's then. not feasible. Even then. I think an, uh, uh, quite a, a simple way of explaining it, I think as well, would be, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it's kind of like, if you're having a fight with somebody and there's two people that are at the same level, and let's say they're at the highest level, it's like, if you have all three combat styles, it, it's like, there is that element of RNG there because you can only pray one thing at one time and they could just decide to bolt or they could decide to mage. And I, I guess inherently it's like the whole PvP and sort of melee or combat system is based upon RNG when you take it to that extreme, right? It, it's like it wouldn't, it wouldn't negate skill in being able to read your opponent, but in this theoretical, let's say it's two people that are, let's say it's two identical people, like you've taken a clone of Manx and he's fighting Manx. It, it's like there still would be it. You are incapable of 100% of the time neglecting the damage that he would deal, if that makes sense. Because there's that RNG element of he could just use the other attack and they could still be at the same level. Would, would that be a fair way of trying to describe what you're saying? Yeah. I think okay. we got the point across, Dude, man. I love how everyone's saying the same thing. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, this, but I'm Solo Mission's too way. smart for his own good, man. We we, we ain't got Rice <laughs> Cup on our either, and Rice Cup always dumbs it down for me and Mint, so we're, we're doomed. <laughs> hey, 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 don't throw me in your category, all right? What we oh, need, man. we need uh, Solo Mission to uh, email his former tutor, Brian Cox, and have him come on and explain this to us for dummies. I think that would help a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. I was thinking about right. making a video about that, actually. Like, can you, could you code a bot which would never lose, like, based on expected value, like, to a player? And I fully believe that you could, because if, the yeah. bot won't make you If mistakes. someone published that paper, made it a reality, RuneScape would be over. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it I wouldn't mean, be, I, I, I honestly don't think it would be that difficult to do. Like, really. I, like, well, I, I'm not very good at programming, but like, well, theoretically, I would still beat I that, really that I would do it. <laughs> something, so. something really interesting. Uh, so, there was an AI that was created. It was a self teaching AI, and uh, it was done in the game of Dota, which is like League of Legends. And uh, they were given permission to make this AI, and it was basically programmed to learn from its mistakes and just become the best. And it did. It became, like, it was unkillable by the end of it. It was so good. It was so much better than the pro players in Dota that the pro players started to learn from the AI. Like, they copied the AI and how it played. Because it wasn't a case of, like, RNG or chance. It got it down to a point of, like, a T. It did everything to max efficiency, and it was more or less unfucking killable Like, it just didn't make mistakes. Yeah, we yeah, you can do the same thing with RuneScape. On AI, right. like there's so much. There really is, uh, including with gaming. Man, it's crazy. It is uh, crazy. Yeah, but anyways, but I, I I think we've pretty much covered this mm -hmm. entire blog at this point. Uh, do you guys have any other things that you guys would like to add to this? Any other faults to take away? You go first, Joe. Oh, uh, final closing thoughts. Dead man, good. Let's go. Everyone should try it, even if you've. You played the first few and you're like, oh, fuck that, man. Like, just, just try it out. Why not? Mm -hmm. Make, yeah. and, and and if you think it's really going to be a struggle, like, I would really take advantage of the combat worlds. Um, make a low level thing. And then like, you could do Witch's House. You can get 50 hit points. You could grab, grab some food and you're probably not going to die in that lower combat bracket. Like, just take advantage of what's been there put in by JX to help you out. And I honestly think that man is one of the most fun ways to enjoy the game. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's like Trailblazers, and my girlfriend, she she doesn't play RuneScape that much, she goes for Agility Pet, and that's pretty much it, uh, and now she literally just waits for seasonal events, so it's honestly, it's such a good way to, to play the game, and because they're only here for a limited time, even if you're not a PKer, you're just a casual guy who plays RuneScape, I'd still give it a go and just see what happens, you know, we all play RuneScape for the adventure, and it's such a good adventure to have, so... See what happens and have a good time, man. Exactly, man. Always play day one at the very least of every dead man mode. Day one is just so fun. Oh my yeah. god. It's so Dude, good. Dude, I mean, 
I, I I don't know about you boys, but I am I am ready. I am so excited for this, bro. Like I I listen. It might be an unpopular opinion. I'm not so much into trailblazers. I'm not so much into the twisted leagues. Really? Like I, I it's just you were doing really me. good at the silk stalls. I don't like, know, man. Here, here's the thing, though. It's like I don't personally thrive and enjoy that content, but I'm happy that some people do, and I'm glad that they're getting the love that they deserve. But for me. This is it right here, and I, I'm so excited, bro. And it, to think it's only 23 days, 23 days from today, the second, that we'll be running around in dead man mode. Solo mission's going to be camping poor questers. Mank's going to be at Edgeville killing everybody. And Mint Mad Cow's probably going to die in the Chaos Druids. Like, I'm <laughs> fucking buzzing, man. I can't wait for this shit to come I into the game. I could kill people. Nah, <laughs> honestly, for me, it's not if I'm going to lose all three lives, but how many times am I going to get reset? So, <laughs> but I'm still excited. <laughs> but I will say this. Remember, a thousand likes on this video, and me and Mint will do a 1v1 to the death. And mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, Mint, if you do want to stand a chance, mate, you better get DT done. If you You're haven't got DT hair, done, mate... dude. You said you're, you're not going to cut your hair, but when I win, I'm going to have your fucking head decapitated, <laughs> hanging by your hair, holding that shit, slapping it around, bro. So I'm going to win. Don't worry. They can, worry they, can add that, they can add that into the game as one of these demo hey, mode loots. I won, I won the league's competition, buddy. I'll win the dead man will win. All right. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. I got this. All right. Well, Solo Mission Manx, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. Uh, for anybody watching, if you guys don't know these guys, I don't know what rock you've just crawled under. We'll link them down below. Highly suggest following these guys. And uh, yeah, thank you, boys. Thank you for coming on on such short notice.